I wanna be the best in the game, invest in my name Check no restraints, I'm obsessed with the pain I ingest, I retain, assess and I change Possessed by the thought I'll be free one day From society's restraints, money, clout and fame Mud disease, a plague, we all love to hate Have to play the game, have to make a name All our insecurities are on This display. is war with the enemy Think that it was meant to be Living in a time where diseases Hello and welcome listeners to another episode of Tactical Awareness This is Season 1, Episode 38 And we will be jumping into ICS season 15 this is the end this is the final episode of season one uh, and starting next week we'll be doing deep dives into the various missions and stuff going on into the new season so come along with Owen and Dan and myself as we round out our first season our first ITS season and tactical awareness season um, with an overview of the new ITS document before we get ready to deep dive into season two That sounds like way too much work. <laughs> work. I'm not at work. I don't want to do a three hour episode. That's a lot. That's, that's a ton of work. Um, hey, everybody. Uh, I think you all know what this episode is going to be about, probably because I've already said it in the preamble of the episode, but we're talking ITS season 15, which was why uh, there was no episode last week because I had heard rumblings that this was going to drop and doing another whole mailbag episode felt like just stretching things out um, when we could actually get in and talk about the the actual new season, which is exciting. It's here. It's dropped sort of because we don't have the classified decks yet. So while we have the missions, we're missing a puzzle piece yet still, which is the classifieds. So yeah, let's jump in and see how everybody's doing. See how one and Dan are getting on. Uh, and then we're going to do an overview episode to start off with on the document, the sort of like top line hits. And then as we go forward in the coming weeks, we will do individual episodes on the new missions. And then once the deck is in hand on what I think is the most interesting section, which is the very end, which is the resilience um, operations, which is like a whole new tournament style where every mission is procedurally generated and there's a bid system. Uh, so let's dive in first and see what's been going on with Owen. You said uh, earlier you were planning a event for this weekend. No, 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 for the thirtieth. For the thirtieth end of the month. Gotcha. Weekend. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna do a Calgary Welcome to ITS fifteen. I'm uh, I'm out of town that weekend. Well, that's too bad. <laughs> Owen's just gonna have to win his own event. You're just going to have to cancel your plans. That's right, Dan. You're just going to have to move. Whatever you have going on isn't this important. So exactly. My girlfriend would be upset if I canceled our camping trip. <laughs> Look, man, what? it's you, you, know you think there's still going to be an Alberta on the 30th of September. Girlfriend's it's going to all be up in ITS is forever. Wait, just, just postpone it. There won't, even be a, there won't even be an Alberta left by then. <laughs> It'll just be gone. Um... So what's the plan then? Like you were debating doing just the new missions. How are you feeling about that? I'm going to do to just these two out of three of the new missions. Mm. Uh, it basically evacuation is is just too much. I think last launch might be too much as well, but we're going to do that like last, last round, launch. and then no one will have to worry about it. Yeah. No, I'm going to do pong decapitation and last launch. That's a solid lineup. And then you have some some button shenanigans in the first round. The second round is a murder fest, and then the last round is the runaway. That's, a, that's I like that mix. I like the mix of like kind of what you're playing for in a single mission. I think that's important. Like that's a I think that's a a good way to run an event where you're not just allowing one sort of play style throughout the entire like like game sets. You yeah. know what I mean, you can't I, just kill your way I to think victory if you can slip last launch into an event because <laughs> it's so weird like yeah. it's it's easily the most different scenario i've seen in infinity and I, it's one of the ones where i don't think you can just kill your way to victory it's very you, hard you, like you have to spend orders on doing the mission you can't kill your way to victory because as part of it you have to leave that's what i mean right like it's not it's a lot of them the enemy you know cannot perform the mission be disabled their hand is still kind of valid but this one it feels like it's not but we're putting the horse in front of the cart because 
or the cart in front of the horse because that's that's a, a conversation before we get to that mission. Uh, anything else? You been painting anything or doing any hobby? Not really. Um, mostly just some list building and then like accumulating what I have for uh, Ariadna because I was talking about doing um, US Ariadna this Ariadna. season. Yeah. Or at least to start it off. But we'll see. I'm excited to start a new army. I'll be honest. That's the thing I want to end this with. I want to do like a Russian roulette where we do a poll as to what army I should do at the end of this. I still, uh, everyone thinks I should do hack because I've never played hack because you always played hack. So that seems to be where everyone's leaning is that I should do hack Islam for this season, which I think would be fun. Um, yeah, I'm inclined to do that. And Dan's doing Yu Ching. So I, I don't want to do Yu Ching because he's going to be doing that all over the, over the podcast. There's a thing right now about how like I heard about it after, oh, I did play a game the other day. Um, but about how the Calgary meta has just been corrupted to this two tag thing. By uh, you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your answer influence. wherever you go. And uh, it was after, because we did the Hotter Than Hell's Basement event. Sure, sure, yeah. And yeah. I, I guess there was some conversation about it. And the like, two Yodums is real good. <laughs> make fun of those two yodums but then their ability to be alive while i crit my opponent <laughs> that was the trick that's right if i can't die i can just roll until i get the crits i need yeah the trick to it is to start at the beginning with those crits though <laughs> just uh, crit right away yeah, yeah i like how i like how you immediately threw yourself under the bus during the whole description of that <laughs> you just you're like ah, i don't know i just had armor nine <laughs> crit my yeah. opponent to oblivion that but like that is such an accurate description of what happened during those games yeah, like you can't really get credit oh my god yeah <laughs> it's not i didn't think much farther than wow these dice sure are good yeah i'm gonna suppress and i'm armor 10 this will work out all right well i'm gonna shoot you with my hmg well what if i just crit you and you die and what if i just save against that hmg on threes no, the HMG just doesn't hit me, and I just crit that him, too. and he gets killed instantly. That's what you get for bringing uh, um, symbiote mates. That's or right. No, they won't save you against HMG regular. They won't bowler. save you against my good dice and your bad dice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes you eat the bear. Oh, yeah, then he, he shot back at the one, my remote. I forgot about this one. He rolled the four dice for his Spitfire, I think it was. And he crit on three of them, and I rolled one dice and also crit. Oh. <laughs> it was just like, yep, that's the ultimate fuck you when you get multi crits and then you're. Oh, that was awesome sorry. Crits. No, that was this this past game I played. Yeah, uh, the avatar was just annihilating my double uh, Yodum list. And the only reason I won is he got really unlucky with the. Uh, we were playing. I think it's countermeasures. The ones where the objectives just flip. Um. And he just didn't get the right objectives, and I did. Uh, we killed yeah. everything. I had like yeah. a couple uh, fusiliers running around at the end, and that was it. Just just watch, watching the the buttons have the right color light blinking on them. When it was that over. one says "step on that lady's neck now." Oh, good. I was waiting. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect mission accomplished and victory. Uh, that one says we have to go tase that remote. Okay, well he's already dead, so I just need to run over there and do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, the someday the horseshoe will collapse out of you, and Maybe. you won't have these games. Um, so sorry. What was the what was the like uh, the two tag scuttle? But you never really finished the story. Oh, I I don't know. I, just, I, I just don't have a lot like, of details. I just the other people would started thinking about playing them. Well, I mean, it happened for a little while there when uh, when Amy was here, and we've we've had like a bit of a break since he left, and now we're gonna like I'm starting to get this event going, and I'm sure there'll be more once we get the ball rolling again um but uh but yeah there there's been this thing where like i know there's been a couple folks there's uh guys who brought double ride show and double um what are they called the uching or not the uching the jsa one oh oh you're right the boy you're right real good yeah double oh you're right there was one that was a tick belaying plus um serif there's just all kinds Mm -hmm. everybody brought something 
Just or even it. like anathematic plus avatar. Like that's a, that was real popular for a while. That's, that's not a an, double anathematic. tag, but it's kind of. But it's basically tag. a double tag. Yeah, it's pretty close. Yeah. So Cause it's because it's cheaper than the Sphinx. Yeah. Some kind of double uh, nomad tags. Some variation thereof. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so I might go Ariadna and then never use a tag this season. Um, I won't play Ooh, Ariadna fun. the whole time. Do like a challenge mode. Though I might collect my dogs again over this this ITS fifteen <laughs> old all yellers runs all time. What about you, I Dan? Mean, yeah, maybe. <laughs> it's hard to get to three hundred points with just grunts. That's a problem. Yeah, now <laughs> it used to be okay. I played that against you, if you remember. I do remember. Yeah, it was thirty grunts. It was a whole lot of armor three and four two move. They, they didn't I walk anywhere very fast, but they sure didn't move. Four. Of yeah, they did. I died almost every shot. No, no, no! I just mean like you, you didn't, you oh, didn't like you just stayed in anything. cover with armor six because you had armor yeah. three on everybody. Yeah, it didn't matter. No, no. What about you, bud? Um, I've been playing a few games, which has been nice. Um, I it's kind of at the weird spot where I want to start playing some new Jing stuff, but I'm still lacking like that core box, mm-hmm. and it's just never coming. So. Meeple Mart has them in stock, and so I might just order that. If Meeple Mart has them in stock, this guy should be able to get them. Yeah, but they can't. I've been just harassing them for mm. like six months now. So, <laughs> so it's like, well, if you don't want my money, you don't get my money. Fair. Um. So yeah, so I'm probably just going to order online and, uh, and get that core painted. Uh, yeah, get some of that <laughs> stuff going. Because it was like, I've it's just been fun building lists, like theoretical lists for the new missions. Um, hopefully, I me and Owen are off tomorrow, so hopefully I can get him out of bed for two o'clock, and uh, <laughs> we can play some games. I mean, Owen doesn't go to bed oh, until five a.m. Oh, while so. you want, <laughs> <That's right. Yeah. laughs> hope springs eternal, Dan. <laughs> Your name's not Michelle. It's probably not going to happen. Um. So for me, I have been uh, still renovating and renovating and renovating, um, but I've actually got the front office done now. And I have a big four by four table in the front foyer that I can actually play Infinity on. So I'm hopefully going to get some Infinity games going next week. Uh, Chase is coming down to try the first two missions from the pack. Um, And he's done two new armies for ITS season 15. He's done a Rama Task Force, or not Rama Task Force, um, an N2A army. He did uh what's the one I'm thinking of that's a hack one for M2A? Dashat. Dashat, that's right. Yeah, he's done Dashat. Um and then uh he's done Morats as well, which is cool to be able to play other Morats. And then I'm up in the air. I want to do a new army for the season. I also want to finish off the armies I was kind of like finishing off. So like the last couple pieces I wanted to paint for my Yu Ching, not my Yu Ching, sorry, my JSA rather. Um, and I'll probably do some JSA games with reinforcements, painting up the mercenary reinforcements for N2A. And then I got to pick. And the popular choice right now for voting seems to be for me to play Hack because I haven't played Hack ever in my entire life for the one Infinity faction I've never played. I've played against them more than anybody go, else, but I haven't actually played as them. Go so directly like, to Baram. Directly to Baram? Just go I, right to Baram and see if, like, see if what I've been saying is, is you'll see it. <laughs> if I could ever go back to anything else afterwards. We were talking about uh, the new missions like Dan and I this week when it came out and it was like, oh, these are weird. I'm like, I know what I'll do. Exactly the same Barat list. With exactly like nine of, list like nine of the right models now. are the same right off the bat. And then it's like, oh, but I should bring Evos in this mission. Done. <laughs> that immediately makes me want to not play Barat. <laughs> <laughs> it well, makes you just, want to play It makes you want to play like vanilla, like something without fire teams and just go go hard. That list doesn't have any fire teams. You crazy. Barom, Barom doesn't use fire you can teams. make a Barom fire team. You make duos with us. Oh, Sanders. you can make all kinds of cool stuff. No, I'm just saying. It has, it, has, it has some fire teams. I know you don't need to. Yeah. It's all just bait. You're right. It's all just bait. Well, we'll see where I get to. I really want to paint a plastic Maggie when it comes out. So, yes. But we'll do a poll maybe for what I should play because I got a, I got a list of things I might want to play. Um. So, yeah. So, let's jump into the mailbag and then we're going to talk about this season 15. We'll do a, a, a Cole's notes of the season 15 changes and new stuff that we've got our hands on so far. Uh, but we'll do three questions from the mailbag. Big thanks to everybody who asked questions. I will once again link it in when this goes up live. I'll link it in the um, 
the Discord channel, and also uh, it'll be linked in the description of all the podcasts. We got lots of questions this week. We're gonna do three, uh, and please go and replace them. We also got an email one this week too. So I'll start with the email one actually, uh, just so I don't forget about it. Uh, and it's from Horton. It's for all of us, and it says, "Out of all the additions, what has been your favorite meme or gimmick list, and why did it work or not work?" Um, they say in N2 Kaplan became my favorite unit, uh, with the intro of EM2. I was obsessed, but not as obsessed as I was with doctors and hack Islam. I was playing a campaign and the mission was the escape mission. We have to move as many pieces across the board, use an elevator to evac the table. Bonus points were scored by specialists. Why? Because they were special. I had my hack, uh, doctor, doctor, doctor list with Kaplan's villains and halves. Everyone was a link at some point and everyone was a doctor. <laughs> so literally everybody was a doctor. Um, as links broke, Havza stepped in. As dudes went down, there was a doctor with an arms reach. Sure, the data Razzie and outed everyone with chain rifles, but they just got back up next turn, got back in their links eventually, and hoofed it across the table hand in hand with their buddies. So useless at killing, but hilariously survivable because everybody got doctored. That's a neat list. Uh, I, I have I have a bunch of ideas as to what Owen's favorite gimmick list is. I never really played gimmick lists, though. But I'll let you guys answer first. What's your favorite gimmick you guys have played? What is What do you think my favorite gimmick is? <laughs> I think your favorite gimmick is the time that you tried to make non-lethal work. Because <laughs> that's my favorite thing you've ever done. Is that when you played fun. that game where everybody had a non-lethal weapon and you tried to win a game of Infinity without ever killing anyone. Yeah, that was good. Ten, that's ten such a good list. Is, is fun. <laughs> you had nothing but like, what was it? You had gazzies, you had stun pistols, you had... It was just uh, nothing but like goo guns and stock pistols. You had, you had adhesive launchers... Yeah, oh it, was God, it was a QK list. list because they had access to the five man uh Kaplan team. Yep. And, they and all the Kaplans all have adhesive launchers. Yep. And at the time, the sniper that they had could fire stun rounds. Um and then somebody had an EM weapon. Yeah, it wasn't Gazzies because they didn't have EM. But you're right. Somebody had like an EM grenade launcher or something yeah. like that. I don't think the Drews had it yet, but it was something along those lines. Because the idea was basically you were you were hitting them with the goo guns and yeah. then hitting and stun, them with stun it. pistols. Somebody had stun pistols too. I think that was the sec bands had stun pistols. Yeah. yeah. But uh because that was their that's their jam, right? They used to arrest people. Uh they're Pinkertons, basically, yeah. Yeah, exactly the same. Yeah, they, they come looking for your magic cards. They come looking for your magic cards, exactly. I was gonna say they come to break up the unions on on Corregidor, but you know, same thing. 10, 10 Coom Riders, definitely more fun of a meme list because it's so silly. I mean, that was it's more so memorable for place. sure, but it wasn't as, to me, it wasn't as like, it wasn't as, um, you had to really work to make the, the that, that list. The Coom, you didn't really have to make it way they're easier more, now. They're more of a wind existing. up and go. You just, you just unleashed the Coom Riders on me. It was horrible. Yeah. If it, in the current edition, like in the, the new, like N4, you could do it way easier. Like O12 would be so good at trying to build a I'm not gonna kill any models. Like we're only here to take prisoners. <clears throat> I like yeah. did that basically in a, in a game recently. <laughs> I mean I, mean, I the, killed the, the faction is built to do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's like yeah, the, the non-lethal is so good against like things like steel phalanx when you're like, I'm beefy boy and I'm hard to kill. You're like, stick. All right, moving on. <laughs> It's really right. have you, have you thought what it would be like to be glued to the floor? <laughs> <laughs> it's just, well, just... It, was, it was also easier because you had linkable flashball sky, right? And so yeah, like, yeah, that's true. You were able to like get into firefights with people with flash pulses, and like you could win. <laughs> yeah, this is N3 because you had multi-burst flash pulses. So you're like, here's my two tap BS20 gun against whatever you're shooting me with. Two dice on 20s is fine. Doesn't matter what they shoot back. Two dice on 20 is all right. It's a anyway. it's a real thing. What about you, uh, Dan? What's your favorite gimmick you've run? So just recently, um, I think I talked about it last uh, episode where I've just been bringing like the Casanova and Dramada infiltration profiles. And then like no big weapons at all, but just a ton of uh em weapons and so if you have armor or are hard to kill i will goo you or em you otherwise <laughs> i can kill you with copy rifles or other such things like i said like red fury or whatever 
or or Andromeda can punch you in the face or you know but then it's just like oh the big bag tag that's fine i got yeah everywhere because i had like two sarcos and i had like three blue coats and two raven eyes and it was just like a bunch of like disabling stuff and then it right. was just kind of clean up afterwards and it was and it kind of works and it's kind of fun to play because it's just so different like you it gets into trouble sometimes where you're like oh i don't really who can who can gunfight here uh <laughs> i get negative three on my adhesive logic go <laughs> uh but no it's honestly it's I feel like it's uniquely my list that I made, and it's it's been a lot of fun. It, like it was built as kind of a meme, but I was like, this has potential to do well. So, mm -hmm. and it's a it's a star model list, so you can right. have, you just have one core of the blue coats and raven eyes, and then everyone else is kind of just running around independent. I guess you have a few duos of like the robots and stuff. I think I want to recreate a different one where. The robots and the law keepers have like max side bots. Right. I have like six or seven side bots running around. And it's just like, come at me. Let's go. So that's that's, that's that's to be done yet. I'll get to it eventually. Well, I can't think of a meme list I've played recently. Most of my lists have been fairly blended. Um I will say that I did run uh back in um uh and three quite a bit. I ran like the full Spetsnaz gamut. I'd have like the Spetsnaz HMG, I'd have uh or two Spetsnaz HMGs, and I have two of the Spetsnaz shotgun guys with parachutist. And there's there was a couple games I played against Owen where that Spetsnaz shotgun came down and just obliterated his entire army. And that was a lot of fun because that guy used to be able to bounce his shotgun templates around corners um because they were direct they were like impact templates that were teardrops and so i can think of a couple games where you were playing as ossss when they first came out and i would like down the robot at the front of the link team but because he was a robot he didn't go prone <laughs> because in n3 remotes didn't go prone and then i would just shoot him and he couldn't respond because he was unconscious and it would hit the rest of the far team in behind and it was super obnoxious um so it worked pretty well marksmanship shotguns that could face to face with templates were bananas. So when you could get when you could get ignore cover, uh, you'd ignore cover all the time because the template ignored cover against armor as well. That thing was real good. <laughs> it was really, really good. Um, so yeah, I had a few. I had a few like quasi meme lists, like the all Spetsnaz lists, um, with my my like just vanilla Ariadna that I played quite a bit. But this is pre tac tac didn't even exist back then. I don't think. Or no, actually, it was the beginning of TAC because TAC came out when OSSS came out because they were paired in the box. And that's really it. Now, right, let's look at our next question. This is from the actual question thing. We've got Tomato. Maybe Tomato. I don't know what part of the world he's from. As for everybody, it says, I find it difficult to decide how to split up combat groups. Uh, what are your thought processes when you choose what goes on to which group? Uh, we had a good episode on this, actually. I think it's like one of our third or fourth episodes about building a list. Um, that you could refer to. And I think most of my advice stands from that, but I I'll, I'll, I think we can hear from everybody else before I give my answer. Uh, what do you think about that, uh, Owen? Sorry, my my headset was dropping out. What was the first part of the question? Um, I have a hard time splitting up combat groups and deciding oh, yeah. who goes combat into group. what and how big they are. Yeah. <sighs> Me too. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's fair. Like I, I'm always so unsure now about which route I want to go. Like it, it used to be I'd like doing like seven, eight. Um, but now like half the time my list is only ten guys, and then I just throw on staples. Like the list is actually ten models, and then right. I have like between one and five random things that I've thrown on top because they were there. That's but, fair. Yeah, I, I, I think the list, like the faction, matters too. Like I think some armies naturally gravitate towards um, the eight-seven split, like where it's a little more even. Like especially if they have a lot of fire team access, like Spiral Core or, or Toha um, or QK. Now they've got their their two fire teams back or Morats. They might gravitate towards that because you get so much more efficiency out of running those two split lists. 
sure. but but I think that like some like vanilla actually yeah maybe vanilla factions actually too might benefit from having a seven eight split but but I think it depends on what goes in there right like if you can pad in like two gun two really good high quality gunfighters in both those halves and they kind of equally split the they equally split the um the order pools it can be really powerful but then it can also kind of restrain you because you if someone has like a huge advantage you, you've like capped their ability to like really go ham i think it's a, i think it is it depends upon the type of list you're writing what you're including um and how you want that to go but i think that fire like small fire games like hair multi harrises and multi duos make that that eight seven split a lot more attractive what do you think dan yeah i haven't been able to make eight seven work i tried it a few times and it just kind of fall fell flat like it just seems i didn't have the right orders to do it's like a lot trickier i find so it's really hard. getting more conservative for sure it's like it's yeah and it's it's typically like i have a few dudes who don't need to do a whole lot like an evil hacker that needs to put up a thing or someone that needs to go over and stand on suppression or something and like one group and then everybody who wants to do things in the other group and then all the little order monkeys in the background in the big group as well and they're kind of like that's the general feel and like every time it's the same thing it's just like uh, i think this one goes in the other group but it's i i generally go towards like a 10-5 sometimes it's like a 9-6 but almost always it's 10-5 I think you make a good point about the five is if you design a five in a certain way, it can be really, really not wasteful, if that makes sense. Like I'll very often design a five in my JSA where like one to two pieces in that five are kind of disposable. And then the remainder are either reaction pieces or want to spend like an order a turn. You know what I mean? Like an Ava, like he's like an evil hacker. Um, who might want to put down a, like a marksmanship or who might want to change marksmanship or put up fairy dust. Um, my JSA is a good example where I'll have like, I'll have my Ryukin um, unit nine, mid, like heavy rocket launcher, who's typically like an overwatch piece, right? He's one of the only standing camel markers that you'll have in that act, in that faction. Then I'll have like maybe an Evo hacker. Um, and then I'll have like a Yojimbo. Right. And those two orders from the two kind of like stand up pieces are just there to fire you Jimbo across the board and have them cause a bunch of trouble and like lay, lay a crazy koala every turn. And that's it. And then once the once those guys start to die and your main list starts to die, you start transferring the, the survivors, you know what I mean? Whoever's left into the main pool to keep that main pool like floating around 10. And if you design it that way, like with intention that some of these pieces are absolutely going to die. And some of these orders are getting spent early on for like basic things like fairy dust or marksmanship and then and like to push this guy across the board until he dies um you never feel like any of those orders are sitting there unused or nothing no purpose that's the worst thing in infinity when you have like two or three orders in a pool and you can't do anything realistically with them i find that's the worst feeling ever you know what i mean for like army list design you're like oh this just feels like an anchor like this, these orders could be doing something they're just not doing anything I think I think my favorite fan, my favorite five man group was two motorized bounty hunters, two flash pulse bots, and I think an Evo hacker. That's solid. And then it's just like if you're going second, then you can just throw the flash pulse bots up as like, you know, the shoot flash pulses at things. Or extend your hacking net, yeah. Maybe maybe they'll die. They'll probably die, but then they they were spending a lot of orders trying to kill seven point dudes, so that's fine to kind of slow them down. Um, and if you go first, then you're just like, use a flash pulse order, move the two bounty hunters up 14 inches, use the other flash pulse order, move the bounty hunters up, and then the bounty hunters use their own to suicide around corners and try to take as many people down with them as they can. And then you're like, done. <laughs> and then as your big group dies, you move the flash pulses back into the big group. And it's just like, oh, it just seems super effective and great. Yeah, it's like it's it's super efficient, right? Every order gets used and has a purpose. It's kind of what you want, I think, yep. touched on wise. All right, last one. Uh, this is Thang407. Uh, it's for everybody, but specifically Owen, because he doesn't like painting. He says, I play Infinity because I love it, the game. However, I do like having a painted army. 
uh, and have next to no time to paint. What are your quick painting techniques and what paints do you recommend? Let's let Owen go first on that one. And then Dan, because both of you guys are actually really quick painters. Uh, spray paint. <laughs> I Double mean, bottle can. Yeah, yeah. You can yeah. Uh, you can definitely prime them black and then prime them white from an angle. And then you get out your contrast paints or your equivalent of Citadel contrast paints. Pick Two a paints. primary color. Color the entire model in that color. Pick a secondary color. Paint that part in that secondary color. Grab faces, visors, and whatnot, and weapons, and then cover the whole thing in null oil, and you're fine. Or, or yeah. the, if you do really bright colors, use the uh, the brown one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Agrax. Uh, no, Seraphim Sepia. Seraphim Sepia. Yeah. yeah. I think and then, it's like a good a good line, but isn't quite as dark as the black one. Yeah, that's the if you do yellows, blues, or greens. Actually, green you can still do null. Uh, yellow, blue, and orange use the sepia and then the other colors use the null oil and uh that's it it's like 90 percent of my paint jobs it's slap chop i own slap chop before it was slap chop there you go um yeah i mean that was a game changer honestly when those paints came in like i remember when the first line of contrast paints came in you and i were sitting in the studio painting with them and you were just like Oh, I'm never using regular paints again. <laughs> like it was so fast. It, it made it really easy again. to do bright colors. Yeah. Because I before that, it was like a ton of dry brushing was the way I painted. And like very specific highlighting. But now it's I just dunk the models basically. Like, because the spray can does all that highlighting for you before you even start painting, right? Because you're just doing that zenithal spray. Right. But I, I just mean to say that like if they still had the dunk jars that uh the dip. had that min wax was army painter yeah. they had their army painter army painters army, army wax yeah citadel needs to come out with a dip version of contrast paints <laughs> <laughs> and i want it to be i like mean it's just min wax you can just buy it you can just buy it i just want like a like a little like trough of it that's like 10 models long and i'll put them all on a little stick and you just dunk them and dunk them like job well done so I had I had a buddy uh, named Chris who I have my buddy's name Chris. No, what he did, he painted a whole guard army this way. So he primed the guard army white. He painted their shoulders red and their weapons metallic and the and like the gun cases black. And they dunked them all, but he dunked them on the end of a power drill. So he would dip them in the wax and then he would just stick the power drill into a bucket and spin it for like three seconds to like whip off all the excess. Yep. and let them dry and i think he painted like 150 miniatures in a day like it was insane <laughs> with that with that dip method and they look great because that stuff was basically just like the og agrax or shade right like before agrax or shade was agrax or shade that that dip was doing the same thing yeah so that's mm-hmm. become my whole painting method is just slapping all the entire jars. model entire model bit bit done if you want a visual, just Google the word slap chop because that's basically the, there's a million videos now called slap chop um, that are they're the same idea. What about you, Dan? Um, yeah, I just skip the step where you do it black and then the white on top. I just don't feel like it gives a big enough of a difference. Just just spray paint it white and then put contrast on top. And then it's done. It's like, why, why go through that extra step? I don't understand. <laughs> I, I personally sure, can't yeah. tell the difference. I, I mean, so, honestly, that's why that's waste all time? speed paint techniques you're right it's just how bright do you want it to be owen's owen's got a little more saturation in his colors yours are going to be on oh, just higher on like the the spectrum of like the brightness the trick to that dan is i highlight 45 models at a time with spray paint and because i don't get all the metal bits covered i do black first as a quick cover for like the bottom hides many and sins. then the white from above <laughs> the and shadows like, eh, good enough. the shadows hide all of his sins <laughs> If he gets real lazy, if you look at his models from the lower 45, you will still see bare metal. <laughs> but yeah. no one ever does, so it's fine. That's right. No one looks at my models from underneath a oh, weight except for Ash. But no, yeah, but I don't care what you think. I don't give a fuck what I think. <laughs> We've made that abundantly clear. <laughs> if uh if I want to paint fast, it depends on the color. Like some colors with the contrast, I don't either don't have them or I don't not happy with the color thing. So you just 
you just put a dark color down and then you just do like two or three layers up of just like 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 orc skin for example like i don't like a contrast method for orc skin i just do like a dark green and then a lighter green and then like the the yellowy green and then mix some yellow with that green and just kind of you can go super quick with it it's just like oh my god look at how many steps that was i want that down to one (laughs) (laughs) but then they look really good and then the clothes you just like i have all the browns of contrast like all the browns and grays and black it just you just mix and match with those and it's just it's a good time and then and then you're good and then you can mix if you get bored of that you can easily mix contrast colors together to get more colors and different colors or even mix contrast colors with your opaque paints or more opaque paints and so then like there's so much you can do with it while still basically painting contrast and then if you want to take it a step further then then you can put a little bit thicker coat so you get darker and highlight it basically you can you can make it as complicated as you want but when you get lazy you just white and then the fastest way of like mindless when you're doing like assembly line is just yeah you cover the whole thing like i'm painting my yujing orange and so i have the whatever orange contrast paint whatever it's called the griff hounds orange i think and then you just you spray paint white you just slop it in orange almost everywhere the my metal metallic parts i'm actually painting white instead of the regular black just to give some whatever so all like the inner parts are staying white so i try not to hit that with the um with the orange contrast but whatever and then after i'm done all that and they all dry then i go in with the white and i just paint it all all the stuff that i don't want orange i just paint white again and then i just go in and spend a little bit more time and and touch the contrast on to do the other stuff i have like a highlight of blue and then typically i'll do a little bit like i'll do the the white contrast on it and then i'll go with a highlight afterwards to make it like whatever but it's like it's super fast i don't spend a lot of time thinking about it it's the hardest part is like one or two models you think about and then and then you just just assembly paint like i think i think 10 to 15 models at a time is not even that much to assembly paint for me i like that I think both you guys are onto something and my answer to this question would just be kind of to, to sum up what the two of you guys said kind of in generalities. Cause what I don't want to do is give advice that's like requiring a certain type of paint or a certain type of like product or whatever. Cause not everyone listening to this is going to be, you know, able to access the same like. Oh, we go to my old way too. Just buy the color of the spray paint. Uh, that's what the I was say, yeah. right off the get-go. <laughs> go to Walmart, buy the yellow one. Yeah. Covered in agrax and call it done. <laughs> call them imperial fists. Yeah. Um, my so that was that was kind of what I was what I was gonna what I was gonna throw out there is is the the generality is what Owen and Dan and myself would be saying is if you want to quickly paint something, typically the easiest way to do it and it doesn't matter what the technique is. It can be slap chop. It can be a spray paint. It can be an airbrush. It can be dry brushing. All three of those like quickly put a dark color to a light color paint techniques are equally valid here. The trick is you're going from one big primary solid color down to your smaller details. That's the biggest time-saving technique, really, is starting all with kind of one color. It's almost like the, I would call this in like, sort of like more broad pulp culture game here. This is the Space Marine painting method. Most most people who paint warmer 40,000 Space Marines, they all start one color and then they work down to smaller colors. That works equally well in Infinity. Every faction's got like a primary dominant color. In fact, they're mostly color coded: red for nomads, yellow for Yu Ching, like yellow and gold for Yu Ching, blue for O12, white for Aleph, um, purple other blue for the bugs, Pano. yeah, blue for Pano, yeah, green for Ariadna, um, then if, other green for Islam. <laughs> beige for Islam. I was gonna say cocky desert cocky for for Islam. Um, if you just start from is. there and green? add two to three like detail colors, you're you're gonna have a nice result. And then the thing I would add that neither of them really mentioned, but actually I know Owen subscribes to this because this is something he and I were were big on, is finished bases make the model. Basing a nicely based army with an average paint job looks a hundred times better than an unbased army with a beautiful paint job. Like bases really, it's it's like the big Lebowski, the rug really ties the room together. If you if you get nice consistent basing, and there's tons of ways of cheating with basing gels. Things like the Citadel contrast or texture paints, rather. Uh, um, big Vallejo. one I've been using is the yeah. Vallejo texture ones. Yep, and then you paint them or wash them. The Desert Sand for 13 Canadian fun bucks. 
uh you can hit it with any of the different contrasts or whatever or and washes, it just kind yeah. of becomes whatever color you want it yeah, or don't bother it yeah like, just leave, leave it. it as is and you everything goes with desert yeah like, absolutely every yep. paint scheme and then just some tufts the or some flowers or something there's tons of brands out there and they quickly just like zhuzh up your base just rocks you can go even lower and just, then don't just... not paint the rim of the base <laughs> Cause you're going to have dry brushing marks on there. You're going to have paint splatter on there. Just do that victory lap and put black or just some solid color that matches whatever your basing is around the edge. And you will have a nice looking miniature. Um, that would be my, that would be my advice. Solid color up to small colors, do a nice simple basing technique that's consistent across the entire army and then paint the room of your base. And you'll have a good looking army that, that you're, you're happy to play with and put down with cause it's been done consistently. I guess I guess you kind of said it, but basically, yeah, pick one color for like the general color of your army, and then pick the metallic or like the the gun slash armor color that's kind of the in behind or whatever, and then pick one color, usually a complementary color, to kind of not clash but just kind of poke out and like accent color, and then you're good. So yeah, you don't need much more. And then you can you can you can diff, do different shades of those colors or highlight them or whatever. But you just if you just do that, you can pump out so many dudes so fast. And then you don't have to think about it. You have three colors, essentially, and one of those is black or white. And then you just bleh, you just turn your brain off, watch yep. some TV in the background, and you just pump out your dudes. And then even if you don't really enjoy painting, you, you can have a painted army. And Infinity, Obviously. honestly, like Infinity's model count, it, I know it says you only need 10 models, but and that you're going to have more. Like you will have more, but the model count overall for most Infinity armies is like a couple squads in a lot of miniature war games, right? Like you don't, you don't have to spend a lot of time painting. In a weekend, you can paint Infinity Army and have lots of unit choices and lots of selections if you follow that method of just like everything starts off blue. And then you if you have an hour, sit down and just do all the metal. And then if you have an hour, sit down and do all the contrasting color and then you let that dry. And then if you have an hour the next day, sit down and just wash them all. And would, don't uh, don't try and do it all in one or like don't own it every time and do it all in one sitting because I'll just sit down for four hours and do 40 miniatures. <laughs> but not everybody has that in them. That can feel like it's too much. Um, I go th I go through like phases where I'm like, I don't touch a miniature for like two months because I'm just like, I don't want to paint. And then one day I'll be like, I want to do something productive. Let's yeah, paint. I did it on Monday. I painted 12 Battletech Battle Max from like primed to finished in like four hours. I just hammered them out. I do want to say for people who don't have a lot of time to paint and they, they like leave it and come back or they haven't painted something in a long time. Um, take out your phone. I'm not going to assume that you don't have a phone. Put all the paint colors that you used on that model just next to each other and save a little file of all of the different paint combinations for each of the things that yes. you Yes, take a picture of them all together. I forget how I did previous paint schemes, and I can't easily replicate them, and so I just end up repainting everything. That is such a good piece of advice, because I have never thought of doing that, and I have so many armies where I'm like, I guess this is as close to how I did it last time. I cannot for life remember what color I used on my Stormcast. <laughs> I have so no you, idea what bronze you line that up is. Those I can't bottles, figure it out. And then you just take a picture, and you're like... If nothing else, I know that these were all involved. <laughs> Maybe so I'll smart. get the order wrong. That's so smart. But... I should definitely do that. Uh, I have to go back and look at the, really uh, the paint table video for when I painted them and try and figure out what color it is. So so wet palettes are like super nice if you're painting kind of on a regular, like every day or every couple days. If you get like a, I'm going to paint for half an hour, like every day kind of thing. Like a wet palette is just like essential because then you can have those you can mix colors you can do it you, you save so much paint it's just like everything's there and it's like really nice and you can home you can create your own wet palette like super easy you just get like a paper towel and parchment paper on top and a, like whatever it's something that's sealed uh, 100 and then and you're good to go with some water on the mm -hmm. bottom so yeah you can Directly look it up on the bottom line and do you do, you, uh, do your own kind of oh and paints right out of the bottom just lets them air dry the whole time I mean, I'll do that too when it's like every once in a while. But like, if I'm working on something and figuring out a paint scheme with colors and stuff, and I'm like trying to mix stuff. Oh man, the wet palette is beautiful. I think mine's all moldy right now because I left it for too long. <laughs> you left it for too long and it got I went bad. Out. I have one oh, idea. You just reminded me. I need to dry out because <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's going moldy right now as we speak. So there's this definitely disadvantages as well, but the. Uh, 
but yeah, if you're not painting with contrast and you like to mix and match colors, I always like to experiment in different things to like keep things fresh for me. Because if it's boring for you, it's it, you're not going to do it. So make it exciting somehow. Mix some colors. That's fair. That's smart. Very smart. Well, there we go. We got through another mailbag episode. In fact, the final mailbag episode of season one of Tactical Awareness. Uh, and now we get to get on to the main event. Game. Nope, we're done. No more. No talking. That's I'm it. out. See you You're later. Done. Shut up, Dan. Bye. Yeah, nothing to say about ideas. <laughs> no, no, no. This is this, this is the end of season one. This is our this is our preamble into season fifteen. So this is the end of season fourteen, and now we get to talk about a new order. Cue the song from the club scene in Blade. Um, that was a that was a remix of a new order song. Uh, so yeah, so we're not going to do a deep dive because that's season two when we start actually deep diving in all these rules, but we've had a couple days to digest these uh, and talk about them. Um, and so what I'd like to do is break this into three things, <clears throat> three sections. First section is uh, the like um, the preamble stuff. So like the basic rules and the rules for um like the season rules so like civilian civi vac uh case vac like all that stuff all the extras that are and aren't in there uh particularly things like long service prestige border skirmishes and all that stuff um and then the extras and the classifieds because there's a little bit of information about the new classified deck in here and then second part we'll do the just a quick overview of the new missions uh we're not going to deep dive all the existing missions although there were some a couple tweaks in there and then the third part, I want to talk about our opinions um, on the new section in here, which is resilience operations. We don't have a ton of information about those yet because they require us to have the classified deck, but I want to talk about those too. So let's kick it off uh, by talking about season 15 just in like general terms. So general terms, season 15 is 19 missions instead of 20. We have five direct action missions instead of four. And we have a brand new section called resilience. Um, first blush, stuff like the uh, bike rule disappearing in ITS-14 and reappearing in the FAQ, that seems to have happened with the Tachikomis. Uh, or Tachimotos, sorry, I call it Tachikomis, because that's what they're called in Ghost of the Shell. Um, Tachimotos, which is the, um, if you have sensor and Ford observer, uh, you got marksmanship, you got tactical awareness, and you got hacker minus three. UCM hacker minus three. That seems to be gone, but it could appear like the bike stuff did in an FAQ. What are you guys' thoughts on that? It's kind of up in the air still what's going to happen. Are you okay with it just being gone, gone? I think they're um, all going to the forever bench if it's gone, gone. They were already, like, even with all the buffs they had, did you really see them all the time? I saw them in every mission. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. I, I didn't. I didn't see every player bringing them. Like, I... I think the reason you didn't see them is you played hack so much and people, but people took them against you guaranteed. No, but to no, try I, and sniff out your stuff. Uh, not really. No. <laughs> well, they should have, like, because having maybe, a sensor that can get up there for free the with a game is a big played, deal. Had those guys. Maybe. Probably less. Like I went to that event with, uh, with you in Niagara. Yeah. No one had them. Really? No one in that event used them. I did. <laughs> That's true. Really, you're an odd one out then, because yeah, at least true. the other three people I played, none of maybe one person had like one. Mm-hmm. Like Morat certainly weren't, because there's is if they don't need them. Sure, but that's what I mean. Even with all those buffs, I don't need them. They're not good enough to get into my list. I, I, I mean, think you took they, them with double Maggie. You took them all the time with their feats. Sure, I I found use out of them, and like I brought them with my double Yodum as well. Like they're good if I need like efficient order monkeys. Um, I just don't think they're. It, I, I think if you just got rid of the marksmanship part of them and just left them as is, or got rid of the tack away, it'd be fine. Sure, but without, I think get rid of I the tack away guys... is probably more likely to happen. I think the, yeah. the order efficiency thing is the thing that's more likely not to happen. Well, uh, or just make it so it's like a different FTO file or right um, file. Like make it so they can't link with anybody. When they're in the FTO or when they have the mm-hmm. tech like or like that, take tech work from the FTO or something like that, maybe. I think keep everything the same, but make it so they can't 
when they have the tech aware, maybe keep a separate profile that's older that can link if it's right. a new one, and then make the new one just unlinkable. Mm-hmm. And I think keep everything the same. And then it's like, then people are still tempted to bring it, but then you can't use it just for order efficiency. It's just like its own thing. Right. So you'll it's see them pop up every something. once in a while, but they're not going to be everywhere. Because right now, I think they're just going to disappear and you, you just won't use them. That's fair. Well, nothing's appeared in army so far for them. Um, not that they had mimetism like the bikes did. A lot of the bikes that already had mimetism didn't like nothing changed when the update happened, but there was a few that gained mimetism. Um, so far, I'm just looking at the Pathfinder. There's no marksmanship. So if it was a day one patch, maybe they'll wait for the FAQ to come out to, to change the actual stuff in army, or maybe it'll just stay the way it is. Um, so the next thing is we have a glow up for uh, AD troops, which was kind of the guess that we made actually a couple episodes ago. Um, and it's called border skirmishes. Once per game, each player can deploy a trooper possessing a special skill with the airborne deployment label inside an exclusion zone. But if they're using combat jump, no fee rolls required, but they must deploy in silhouette contact with the edge of the exclusion zone. So basically they have to be parachutists. How do you feel about that? What do you mean? Uh, no, no, they don't have to be parachutists. Uh, no, but they're deployed like a parachutist because they have to be in, in contact with the edge of the exclusion zone, right? Yeah, so it's, like, it's, it's not on the edge of the table, but like they can't be in the exclusion zone if they do it. They just have to be on an edge. They can just be on any edge. Oh, so like quote unquote parachutist with the exclusion zone. With the exclusion zone, yeah. It's it's like when the parachutist arrives on a deployment edge or a side of the table, like th- it's the same thing, except it's with the edge of the exclusion zone. But so they can't be in the, in the exclusion zone. They have to be on the border of it. But, well, I mean, you can still be in it as long as a part of your uh, base is on the border. Right. That's right. And there's no fizz roll required, which is a big improvement for any kind of combat jump, right? Um, but it has to be combat jump. If you have parachutists, you still have to go on the edge. You could the go on the side edges, right, of the mm-hmm. of the exclusion zone because they usually touch the the edge of the table that's not the deployment zone. You just be, wouldn't be able to go on the long edges of the, the exclusion zone. Um, I think it's cool that you can have a, a, a jump troop that is slightly um restricted on where it can come in but can come in with zero roll um the zero roll is a huge deal yeah i think that's really cool especially with something like the cascuda that's been there kind of like oh the scary thing is if it pops in behind your back lines and starts you know killing you with a combi rifle um yeah which you can't do it, it is interesting to note though this rule only applies to six out of 19 missions uh, oh, six of the I 24 missions if we count the other one because there's only six exclusion zones in the whole mission pack this is yeah. way less interesting than the other ones that they've done because of the limited scenario yeah, yeah. like it's tied to a specific type of scenarios exactly type of setup it's, it's b pong countermeasures evacuation uh frostbite last launch and the armory that have exclusion zones now what's interesting is i think those will get played a lot because there's some new ones in there that are interesting and there's some some neat missions in there but it's still only five out of 24 if you're counting the direct action ones. Yeah. I wish it was just one guy lands for free. Just go all out. Let him have it. Yeah. Give him more than one one thing. Like give him that, give him that, that rule, but also give them something else. Just just one guy per game can pass his check. Yeah. I mean that just one, like you don't have to make, you can still bring more Um, because right now combat jump, like it's always a risk even you have to work there's only one mission where you could get to a guarantee on a combat jump but other than that they always had a chance of failure if you because like a lot of people get turned off because of that like 15 to 60 percent failure rate you don't bring them because like yeah cool if they land if they land you'll do a lot of work but you have to make it whereas like now if you just made it where one guy just lands okay but now i'm gonna play every game knowing that i'm probably gonna have somebody try and jump me and so i have to be a little bit more cautious with the way i play and set up yeah agreed it, it, it's less interesting than the bike change and the touch motors obviously yeah. um but that being said those two mission packs had far fewer new missions and changes to the core mechanics of the missions themselves so I think this is probably wise because it would be a lot to juggle having like a whole new unit glow up and then also the amount of new crap deploy that's in this mission. <laughs> this mission pack has quite a bit, quite a bit of new stuff. 
Now the O12's prestige. That's a big deal. So in that one, uh, players well, can make tactical side, use side of. Note. Sorry, I was confused why it was called O12's prestige, but then I read the little blurb at the beginning, like just now, of like the the fluff behind the new order of how it's like a right. ceasefire. And I like basically all of the factions have combined help civilians during the ceasefire. And so O12 is like, good job, everybody. And so everyone has the O12's prestige. Carry on. That's right. They've been given they've been given basically an attaboy because everyone's gotten their shit together for once to because the it's it's uh it's watchman rules, right? The aliens have basically won. <laughs> and so everyone's like, oh, we better start actually like working together. Um, so yeah, so the, this one is players can make use a tactical use of a command token once per game round, expending a command token to add one regular order to the order pool of one of their combat groups. So basically you can convert once per game round um, a command token into an order. So three of your command tokens could become um, additional orders. And there's also bonus command tokens to a couple of these uh, these missions as well. Wait, and there's nothing about max command tokens, right? Nope. So you can get six. Sure. It's still always going to be three, like as far as the extra orders are concerned. As far as the extra orders go, yeah. But there are four missions that have joint command where you just get an extra command token. Uh, And I think those are specifically being done so that you can use that rule because they're all order intensive ones. It's it's, um, highly classified, looting and sabotaging, panic room and power pack, which are all like, I got to make a bunch of whip checks to do things. Um, I got to get from point A to point B. I got to do like HVT stuff and and classified deck stuff. I feel uh, like there's other ones that are much more order intensive. But yeah, whatever. The new ones. Well, are- there's also times where you want to be able to coordinate. So having those extra ones yeah. to coordinate, like especially in panic room, because you're trying to get inside before the frost kills you. There, there's other reasons other than just like being order intensive. I think there's also some efficiency stuff in there to get the the joint command stuff. I like that it's tactical, and so you can use it. At any time, you can be like, you know what? I will take one more order. Bonk. Yep. You're Agreed. Like, There's just nothing worse than like, my last order, I need to kill this guy. If it's the last thing that needs to happen this round, I fail. Oh, I can get another order. I think the real power of this is how it messes with camo. Um, There's a lot of times where you're sitting there and your opponent has a camo model and he's waiting for you to go to your last order and then he's going to reveal in the last order and do something because then he knows he's only going to face one right so if you just sit with one order left quote unquote and then you're like all right i'm going to use my last order and i move across this place do you want to react and it's like if you react we'll get this little fight you might kill me you might not and i may choose to pull another order out or not go again and then you've just lost your reveal. Like you don't reveal, I don't pull the order. And now game state ends and you don't get that guy who was otherwise hit or something along yeah, those lines. Yeah, there's a potential for like a, chick, a game of chicken there almost. Yeah, you are you know your opponent has an infiltrating hidden deploy guy because you're just playing that kind of faction and you can tell he's waiting till your last order to reveal them. And then you choose to end essentially one order earlier. Now you still get that command token. You still do coordinates and stuff like that later on. Um but now you don't need to get that extra regular order. And if he anticipates that you're going to get another regular order, maybe he doesn't reveal. There's a little something there. Yeah, definitely. There's some, I think that you're right. There's some subtlety to using that, that conversion a little bit. It's about like converting irregulars. People forget about it and you can do some subtle things with converting irregulars in your back pocket. Cause you can do both those things now. Yeah. But the, even, uh... even just the extra command points. Um, allows you to take lists with more irregulars, for example. Yeah, that's your command, yeah. That possibility. So it's like, and again, because Infinity is so like mission-driven, is that when you're like looking at an event, especially like a lot of smaller events, it's only like three missions. When you're looking at five missions, you got to bring a more overall list. When you're looking at three missions, like you can, you can really lean into the advantages and disadvantages of certain missions. So that's kind of cool. I like that. Yeah, and that, and that joint command being in four missions is not nothing. You're going to have an extra command token in other places. And then a lot of factions just have access to extra command tokens, right? There's a there's quite a few plus one command token lieutenants out there. Yep. So now speaking of, and because we're getting into now the mission extras, because we've done the the two like new, because there's also like civilians, um, HVTs, all that stuff. 
uh, outside of that. So long service is still in here. So anyone who's got a name basically counts as being veteran for the purpose of the um, classified cards. Uh, case fact is still a state because you're trying to case fact people doesn't need a target still a state for additional models, civilians and city back is also an action. So you can move friendly models who've been downed with case back and you can move HVTs with uh, Civivac um, for various missions where you're required to do it. Now, on top of that, there are uh, the joint command. And then there's also four additional mission specific rules that are duplicated across other missions. Now for um, eight missions total, but four missions and then four other missions have what are called quantum anomaly zone effects. Uh, so last season we had the um, decompression zones, which were just like holes in the spaceships because it was taking place in like a big like orbital space station. This time around we have holes in space and time. <laughs> now they get they get extra dangerous though. So imagine they're exactly the same as last season, where they are both saturation zones, difficult terrain, um, and zero g. But uh, active troopers that declare or perform any orders inside of them must make a saving roll against BTS with damage 10. And if you fail it, you take a wounder to your da- to your uh, wounds or structure. Uh, so not only are they difficult ground, they're actually things that can kill you now. We can't ignore them. So if we thought they were annoying last season, they're even more annoying now because they actually can kill you when you move through them. Um, four missions have these quantum anomaly zones, uh, which is capture and protect decapitation and firefight and then frontline which are all very popular missions because they're fairly simple frontline and firefight in particular are very very popular um and these zones got got way crazier <laughs> so yeah uh how do you guys feel about that the fact that the the saturation zones can now kill you i mean now i have to put it on the board <laughs> now it can yeah. actually do something now, now you care about it yeah <laughs> like, hey this might actually do something it actually has like a, a game impact like you can block off avenues of advance with it and there's four of these things on the table in those missions wait and, and there's no way to ignore it nope because like before it was like oh if you have train zero g you just ignore it or you get better in it cool. no this one just says moreover any active trooper that declares or performs an order any active trooper so you can probably still ignore you ignore the effects of difficult terrain zero g and saturation zone so you wouldn't ignore the saturation zone. You ignore the difficult train effect if you have the zero G skill or the total skill, but you wouldn't ignore any of the other effects. So wait, is it when you like, can you walk through it and not take damage? Or nope. is it only when you activate it in it? Or It's any um, trooper that declares or performs an order inside a QAZ. So if you move through it at all, or you declare an order inside of it, like if you arrowed while you're inside of it, you take a damage 10 roll against your BTS. Uh, if you ARO, you do not. You are not an active trooper. Or any active trooper. That... Oh, you're right. That's right. Your reactive troopers wouldn't do it. So if you, you were to, to say, yeah. good, good catch. Dodge into it. Because <laughs> then you wouldn't uh, block it. You because... could you reactively keep dodging out of it. Yes, you could. But if, as long as you were never active. Yeah. Well, you could actively dodge into it. Because you, you could. never declared or performed uh, an order while inside of it. Declares or perf- no, because you'd be performing the order inside of it. During the dodge maybe yeah yeah i think that it doesn't get around it no but dodging into it you wouldn't if you dodge into it reactively though you would be right on you'd be able to, to to get around it that way because you wouldn't be the active trooper what if some like cc monster is trying to murder you you're like i dodge into the zone <laughs> at least we have oh my god that would screw up seal flank so bad <laughs> and maybe with yeah, their no armor no pds heavy. i mean the, the heavier guys obviously would, would care but like myrmidons and stuff would just melt yeah well you just go back to putting those in the back corner of the table yeah (laughs) i mean if nothing else you'll definitely mess up airdrop troops sure like yeah you could block actually that's true you could block off all the parachutist avenues couldn't you the list that i built to try and tackle uh last launch has a very obvious gulam lieutenant and he'll be living the best of his life if i played a mission that had these i could surround him in those templates (laughs) And then he just sits and prone on a roof sure. with those Two around of them him for on the sure, yeah. and be like, okay, go away. And I'll bring my dog. Have we gotten to that QAZ creature? Not yet. Okay. We'll get there. D- you should notice too that they can be placed on any surface of the game table that is equal or larger in size than the template. So 
I Luke think Dobbs. they can be placed on terrain now. Yeah. Wait. Does that mean you can't like put them like half under a building? You have to like they have to fit. They have to f- yeah. fully fit in the service. But what's interesting is they did add the line. It cannot be overlapped with another quantum anomaly zone. So you can't stack them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> they caught on to that one. I think it's interesting. I just think I like the idea when of there being a filter on the table. I think it's cool. Take part in that. And we both put ours in the corner on top of each other until there aren't any. Yeah, that's what <laughs> everyone did in the last season. Just four stacks on top of each other. But like, what if... What if like the terrain is like really dense? I mean, they're only five inch zones. You can usually find four or five inch areas to put something. But what if you don't? I don't know. I mean, then you'd have to agree with your opponent how Ask it works. Your TO. Yeah, like, hey, TO. set up this board. And if there's I mean, no TO because yeah. you're just playing with someone else, you go, oh, wait, we got to move these. Yeah, but I think that's probably why they're allowing it to be put on rooftops and stuff now, too. But you can only put it on rooftops if the whole thing fits. If there's a five inch zone, I mean, that'll fit into any of the the cardstock train CB makes. I guess that's true. Like the bigger ones. Yeah. Even, the, yeah, even like anything that's not the small one, I think it would probably fit on the roof of. I just feel like oftentimes, like you'll put something on top of the roof to make it interesting or another tiny one on top of the one to make it. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, you know what mission you're playing when the table gets set up, right? <laughs> the TOS will tune an event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now the other half is Quantum Anomaly Zone Creatures. It's the monsters from Liquid Space from Star Trek Voyager. Um, as a deep cut reference for everybody. Uh, the fluidic entities, I believe is what they are called. The monsters from fluidic space. Uh, before the deployment phase, each player must place a QAZ creature, a minimum of four inches outside the enemy deployment zone. I can't wait to see what the ITS pack for this year, the miniatures for these look like, because guaranteed they're going to make miniatures for them. I want them to be weird and cool and Cthulhu-y. Uh, the player that kept the right is just the like, Sassock creature and Tigers. I want something that that is just horrifying. I want something. I want that... Tigers to get guard. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's basically what they are. Uh, the player that guard, kept deployment no is the first. If you gave up Berserk for guard on Tigers, I'd be fine with that. Um, I'll take, can I get guard no line of fire? <laughs> I mean, maybe. They are shredders after all in your army. Because <laughs> they get it on this. <laughs> they have Isla Sight because they're all shredders. Um, the player that yeah, kept deployment is the one to first place a, a QAZ creature. And then each QAZ creature is fixed in place and cannot move. It's basically an immobile, like crazy quell almost. Um, they must be represented by a player A or player B token or by a model or piece of scenery with the same silhouette value, such as the Sasai creature from Tagride or the Tiger creature. The QAZ creatures are deployable weapons, reacting with the CC attack to any order declared or performed by an active enemy model, but not marker within zone of control. Um, the QAZ creature's guard special skill does not require line of fire, but the CC attack um, will become an idle if the path to the QAZ creature to the enemy is blocked. Uh, for example, by an impassable obstacle like a wall of infinite height, a closed door, or a sealed room. Or the gap's too small for the silhouette of the QAZ creature to pass through it. The CC attack of the QAZ creatures is burst three. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. Um, uh, and then let's just look at the stat line for these things because they're in firefight. So QAZ CC creatures. 11, Fizz, four, Fizz 13, arm one, BTS three, one wound. Size one. With an AP one. close yeah. combat weapon. What kind of close combat weapon? AP? AP? Yeah, there yep. you go. First, First three AP. <laughs> and then Fizz 14. Fizz 13. Fizz 13, sorry. Well, Fizz 13 is effectively going to go up and up and up depending on how high the armor is. Like, they're Fizz 17 against tags. Because <laughs> they're having your eight armor down to four. Which is real good. So... Yeah, you're you're looking at you're looking at being real dangerous with guard with these things. Um, and how many do you place in that mission? It's I think one in most of these because they're basically the the turret, but, but close like combat a melee instead turret. of range. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're they're, they're a close it's combat. It's a melee turret. turret that can shoot over through walls. Yes, and yeah. also, what does it mean exactly by a minimum of four inches outside the enemy deployment? Because it doesn't say maximum of four inches. It's within so your like, half. It's within your half. It's within your half of the table. It's basically HVT range. It's outside for from your deployment and then within your half of the table. It's not my deployment. It's my enemy's deployment. Oh, sorry. Yeah, then it's the same thing, but just reversed. Right. So, so can I just it, put it in the middle of their deployment? No, it's outside of their deployment. You have to put it in their HVT's deployment. Oh, zone, I basically. see what you're saying. Got it. 
So right. anywhere they can put an HVT, you can put your tiger. Your your tiger, yeah. So it's your your Taz base or your da- Kaz creature. Sorry, is basically in the same zone as their HVT. It's it's like you're putting something in their midfield, and they're putting something in your midfield. And it reaches four inches into their deployment. Eight. Oh, Eight four because of the buffer. Yeah, you're yeah. right. Yeah. Four, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Oh yeah. What the. <laughs> And when it has no line of them first. I mean, but it's before you, um, it's before they deploy their army, right? Because it's before the deployment step. And whoever chose deployment deploys it first. Yeah. So even if you chose the enemy to deploy first, you have to deploy your chaos creature first. That's right. So you're gonna it's always gonna be a known entity. You can't trap something with it. Right. But like but you can, can get rid of down. Like, you can shut down Andromeda's down. perch for sure. Yep. By the Atalanta. But yeah, or sorry, I don't know. You, you don't. Know I mean, yeah. you need somebody to rescue her now, right? Yeah, right off the bat. And because yep. he's size of one, he's little, and unlike the turret, doesn't need line of fire. And so you can just tuck him behind stuff and just or on like, top yeah. of the building. Yeah, here he is on top of the building. And uh, oh, did you get the uh, the plastic, like the hard plastic card box ones? Oh, the big ones of those buildings, the walls are taller than a size of one, so you better climb up there and get them. <laughs> Oh yeah, he's real good. They kind of seem obnoxious. I don't know if they're going to add anything or just be annoying. They're definitely. I think they'll let you react to deployments. They'll let you react to certain terrain features. I think they'll be like the turret was. It'll just be an interesting way of doing some cover. It'll be a speed bump. It'll cost some orders. I mean, you can just crazy qual it, right? Like you can just take a crazy qual next to it. It reacts, and then the crazy qual goes off. It's interesting okay. that essentially the first two things to be deployed are the Kaz creatures. And so, yeah. So you'll always be able to deploy around them. Well, it means they've thought about the fact that you could create negative play experiences with them. They, they thought about Owen. Yeah. <laughs> I mean... They keep Owen in their hearts, close to their hearts. Just... Think about your terrain collection. Like a, like a tumor. Hey, when, when you're building a table and you're like, oh, we're going to put a, a medium-sized building on each side of the board and, oh, shoot, we don't have another building. Okay, well, that's fine. We'll put these little boxes together. And that's kind of the same thing. They have somewhere to hide. Um, <laughs> and then this thing is squatting outside of the building. Yeah. Well, and it's going to be acquisition, countermeasures, supplies, and supremacy where we're going to see these. So again, supplies and supremacy, fairly popular mission. Acquisition, also fairly popular. Countermeasures, not so much, but I mean, enough that you're going to see these creatures on the table every now and again. I do really like that the ITS things are gone. The CSU and the CSU. The CSU. There's, no, there's no models here. Yeah. I do I mean, not there's... like that. I don't like anything that added an order to your list. Like so you don't like wasn't... they're gone? You're dealing with they're there. I, I like that they're gone. Oh, okay. I sorry. Like I think they you're... were there. Yeah. No, I didn't like that they were there. I am I am much happier now not having the uh the the drop troop and the sec that. Sure. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm finally just having to bring my army as my army. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And like, okay, some of the missions will add want, like yeah. and not, not forgetting about it halfway and wishing you had it. Yeah. Or you went to an event and like which list is it in which group did you put it in did you print off your list that has that appropriate drop yeah you have 25 lists right like oh but i only needed that variant list for that one mission because it wasn't the legal list for these other missions one second let me get my other two missions that don't have those two lists that don't have that in there but then this list did have it yeah it's like yeah. get out leave me alone <laughs> everybody gets one so we got two other Unit types in this one, we got hazmat op and key op. Key op is basically the same as key op from the previous edition. It's dodge plus three tack aware um, and has to be on the table as a model. It means there's like a key operator key to the mission. Um, there's a few missions that feature the key op in this case. Um, they're all direct action. That's battlegrounds, cutthroat, and supremacy. It's because you're trying to keep your key op alive. And then the hazmat op gets terrain zero G and D charges and is also marked as player A or player B, and they have to be on the table. The hazmat op is available in one, two, three missions, it looks like, which is just going to be capture and protect, uh, frostbite, and highly classified. It's because you have to be able to blow up like an AC2 or something like that. 
um, which I think is a, a just a nice that he's constant. The Uber hacker is also in here. He gets a special irregular order still. Uh, the Hazmat gets an irregular order in one of the missions, which I believe is Frostbite. Um, and that's it. Oh, and Evo hackers occasionally get a regular order as well in a few missions. Um, but those are the four main key features. Now, the other last thing to say, which is weird because there's 19 missions, they got rid of unmasking. How do we feel about that? The unmasking is gone. I saw someone put somewhere, maybe they're being sarcastic, but that unmasking was back. That it was a this, something to be said too. Anyone who looked at this at the beginning, this mission set has changed. Yeah, unmasking's back in. This oh, it is back in. You're right. Oh, I just like downloaded four it. Four times. Back in. Okay. Uh, in the last like 48 hours. Uh, like the document but, keeps changing? Yeah, but they're I not just changing downloaded the version. Like 15 minutes ago. So you're right. Unmasking is back in. But the one yeah. I looked at when you guys were looking at it on Wednesday did not yeah. have unmasking in it. Yeah. There, there was also changes to other pieces of it. So okay. apparently it's a living document. Yeah. <laughs> Have, it's also I, probably I, I being know. translated from Spanish and stuff just got left out. I love immediately they're like, is this the right rule or is this a bad translation error? Is this is this legit? Yeah. <laughs> so we're back to 20 missions then. Okay, good. I didn't realize that. No one I I didn't pick yeah. that up during the, the conversation on Wednesday. So we're back to 20 missions. Good. We can roll a D20 again. So 20 core missions, five address dash missions, and then our topic um of the, the end of this whole thing, which is resilience. But let's talk about the new missions. We've got Three new missions, B-Pong, Evacuation, Last Launch, and Last Launch. Um, and it's funny because these missions are kind of what we talked about last episode, about being very different. So why don't we each spearhead one of these? Why don't we start with uh, B-Pong, Owen, and you can go through B-Pong because you've read through all these. Uh, sure, let me go up to B-Pong. Uh, this one is the least crazy out of the three of them in my opinion it definitely feels like the one will get used the most yeah yeah um so the 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 primary setup you have three objectives across the middle with an exclusion zone two of which are consoles one of which is a beacon um the primary goal of this mission is to push the beacon into your opponent's half of the board and stay touching it to control it it's um, blood ball and it's literally blood it. ball it and honestly then, feels like Malifaux. Yeah, it does feel like Malifaux a little bit, yeah. Or, or Guild Ball. While doing that, you also need to control the consoles, at least one, um, each round. And then there's a, a single classified. Um, this one's going to be real hard to get 10 points unless you really dumpster on your opponent. Um, but it's nice that it's every round. I'm really glad yep. that this wasn't an end of game scenario yeah it's it's exactly uh, what you talked about last uh episode it's it's a round score yeah so there's no there's, they're all opposed points there's no like grab the points at the end yeah and so the the way this mission plays out is um there's a relocating the beacon which can be done i believe through the beacon itself yeah, yeah. attack action uh only specialists can do it specialist needs to be in base to base with the tracking beacon spending an entire order but not needing a roll you can relocate the beacon you can move it anywhere within four inches of the trooper who declared it so notably not within four inches of where it was but within four inches of the guy who did it um and you can only do it once per game round and then controlling it is per trooper yeah each specialist troop can only declare this once per game round At the end of each game round the tracking beacon is controlled by a player as long as the player is the only one with at least one trooper as a model, not a marker, in silhouette contact with it. So there cannot, so there cannot be any enemy troopers in silhouette contact with the tracking beacon. No, models in a null state cannot do either. Uh, and then there are two consoles that are spread out around there. And then again, only specialists can do it. In this case, it is a short skill. You do a whip check to activate the console. If you fail, you can try again until you make it. After you success, you can choose to either move the tracker beacon two inches or move the tracker six inches towards the center of the game table. Yeah, like reset it, basically. Um, an activated console cannot be activated again by the same player until the opponent has activated it. So if you suck it back towards the middle, you can't touch it again until your opponent does something with that same that console. Yeah, you can keep kicking the, the beacon so long as different people are doing it it feels like a fire team could line itself up 
to basically soccer ball it and soccer ball it four to 20 inches. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it does, you need it to go into your opponent's half of the board. And so the further you kick it, the closer you have to fight more and more mm-hmm. of their stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but I definitely think you're going to, you're going to want to kick that thing twice so that they, or yeah, is it twice? It's twice plus one console. If you're in base contact with it, you're moving it five it. inches as long as you're standing on the far side of it every time you activate it, right? Because you're getting your but base. If you're like length. a motorcycle, though, then you're moving it six inches. Yeah, kind of. Good point. Even, yeah, Nate and Montessa. Or even further. Yeah, and and it do, a Montessa duo would, would no, kick it's just this thing to the moon. Yeah, so you so, you are just within four inches. So from, from where it was, the two-inch base of your motorcycle, you then measure six inches from where it was... <laughs> Or yeah, it's just forces from the funny. other side of your motorcycle and right. then put but in base contact it's... with the other motorcycle in the duo, and then that thing does it. <laughs> but it's also about an inch and a half wide. And so you're actually moving it like seven and a half inches with a motorcycle. Yeah, you're kicking it, yeah. you're kicking it like 14 inches with, with two orders. Now it is two entire orders, so you had to get both of them set up in position before you started kicking it. And if people shoot at you while you do it, you don't get a reaction. This isn't like a I'm gonna click the button. Or I move up to the button. What if somebody null deploys, though, it feels like you'd be able to get it real, real fast first turn. Hundred percent. That's what we were talking about. You can't the, afford to. Null you deploy can't null deploy on that one. Yeah. You, no, you definitely can in this one because it's end of the round. So if they go first and they spend their effort kicking that ball down the field, and you just go, all right, I step up, I kill the guy touching the box, so you're not getting that point, and then I kill one console, and then I tap that console and move it six inches back to the middle. It's like, oh. <laughs> I think I think it's scary. Like this, this is a mission where I I think the first player you you want to go second unless you unless you have bikes and they're specialists and you have tons of orders and the terrain is set up in such a way that you can kick that beacon a few pages down the down the board. Uh, you're gonna you're gonna want to go second. <laughs> sure. Yeah. And around scoring, you're right. You're probably gonna want to go second in that game. And the fact and you get a class, you, and you get a single class bud. Is there any the, special in this one? Uh, there is a saturation zone, or exclusion zone, rather, but mm-hmm. that's it. And that's it. So you might want to take an AD troop even to be able to use that once per game. Yeah. Now there's the trick is you you kick it and then you AD on the you, line. You and AD to the far side. It. Like that's, that's yeah. I think, going to be the one to you see is someone ADs to the far side of the opponent's half of the table. Yeah. And then someone goes to the middle, kicks it to that AD troop, and that AD troop kicks it somewhere else. Yeah. Uh, the issue is, or the not the issue, but like you can kick it through terrain. Like there's and nothing up. like it's saying move it to an area within four inches. So sure, you can put it behind. As walls. long as it's not like an enclosed um building with the doors closed, you it can just, just push it. You can get it through walls right up onto a rooftop. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if you can do that because it have to. You have to measure the vertical distance, and it would count towards it the way that measurement works for that stuff now. Yep. Um, I guess within four, though, you wouldn't move it. You don't move it. You only need the. You only need you the measure it from it, right? the trooper. So if your building is three inches tall. Yeah, 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 for sure. If it's three inches tall, yeah. Even if it's like just under four, you could mm-hmm. you could have the edge of it. Like if you touch the building and touch the thing, you just throw it over the, up onto the lip. But you also measure from the top of your silhouette, right? Also true. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I'm interested in this one because it, for a couple of reasons. One, I like that it's very clearly defined. I like that it's round scored. And I like that you would take a very different list to achieve this one, I think, than you would to take a, to achieve a lot of missions. So it's going to promote that two list format. <laughs> you would include things to do this mission that you might not include otherwise. Yeah, I I like it a lot. It just seems it seems like it's just like a tug rope kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's it would be more interesting if there was like more than one thing to push. I think, but it might be uh, too much though, especially if you put it somewhere like if there was more than one, you could probably run off with one if that makes sense. And then like you'd get like no round scoring if they're if each of you has one. You know what I mean? If it's like a if one has it and the other doesn't, kind of a thing there's the other one that's like that where there's two and you have to go capture the enemy beacon yeah, that one's that. kind of already like that but uh, i like that the there's like pack. if if in doubt you can always just run to the beacons and 
push it six inches back towards, you know, away from your deployment or away from your side of the board. Yeah, that is clever that you can try and reset the beacon at least one push. You know what I mean? Because that six inches will probably get it back to the middle. Mm -hmm. Depending on how yeah, much. They I, I agree. I agree with you. I think that's a. I think that was a clever like design ad. Because um, you also want to be controlling them each round, and so you want to control at least one. And so it's there's a lot of area control that you want to be doing, and. I mean, if you just kill a bunch of dudes, then you're probably fine and they're not going to be able to do much. But at the same time, if he's going second, you can just like dodge and up into it and then kick it and you just get your points. Mm, agreed. So let's talk about evacuation, which is our second one. So Owen, you described this as crazier rescue. <laughs> this yeah. one's got five... Uh, rescuable civilians uh, in like the shape of like a number five on a dice. So one in the middle of the table um, and then four more uh, two in each half of like a saturation zone, basically. So they're eight inches by, it looks like 12 inches uh, from the edges, the long edges. Yeah, um, yeah. And you're 16 up and 12 in on the yeah. bottom left and right. Yeah. Yeah. And you're trying to basically get these guys uh, back to your evacuation spot. Which I think is really there's neat. no there's no possession on the evacuation spot. It's any evacuation spot. It's any evacuation spot. That's right. Uh, and at of the end of the game, are... for each extracted civilian, you get an objective point. At the end of the game, for each extracted enemy HVT is two because you're trying to capture the enemy HVT as well. Both of the one... HVTs. There are two per player. Oh, that's right. Sorry, that's right. So it's four for HVTs. <laughs> yeah, uh, five for civilians because you're trying to extract all the civilians and you're competing with your opponent for it, <laughs> and then one classified worth one. I don't think anyone's getting 10 on this one. Yeah. Because you want to rush you're... across and get the far ones, I guess, first, if you're going first. So the, like... the way we I've been trying to figure it out. So the ability for bikes to give up impetuous means that they could still be specialist bikers who can grab them. Or the new drop trooper, if you bring a specialist one, where you, you land on the far exclusion zone where there are two civilians touching it. You grab them and run them to your opponent's evacuation and get them out turn one. And then you have to contest your three. And then on turn two, you need to get the rest of the civilians. And then final turn, you have to get two of the HVTs that are going to be on their half again, either to their box or your box, whatever's easier at that point. It's I feel like you grab their you HVTs do. first because that's four they, of the nine points. They can't grab their HVTs though. But you can grab theirs with that drop trooper that goes to the edge of their exclusion zone, right? But then they, they can get their like, civilians. That's like prior. That's to get to ten points, right? Your prior. Like if the goal is to get to ten, if to score as much as possible, you have to grab those civilians because they're the easiest grabs. Because mm -hmm. one, you get a plus three on them, uh, which you do get for the HVT. It's true, but the HVTs they have to come across the board to get yours. And if you can grab theirs early and get them off of the board, I see you're saying there's more time to can. get the there's more time to get the HVTs than there's to get the civilians because yeah, they can't yeah. touch their own. But I don't think well, I guess they can. They can. That. They can case back their own civilians. They can run with them if they want. Well, yeah. they their civilians they can capture and escape with, but their HVTs they can't. Yes, but they can grab the HVTs and move them. Is what I'm saying. Can they? Sure, you can case back HVTs. You always could. Well, then this is even more obnoxious. I didn't think you could do that. But you used to do it. You do an unmasking all the time. You can always catch back an HVT. Really? Or civvy back it? Yeah, here you go, civvy back. Uh, bu -bu -bu, the skill allows troopers to carry the figures that are not case back. I'm looking for civvy back. Civvy back. Uh, this common skill allows a model to move a civilian in a game. Only models, not markers and HVTs, can perform this common skill. Um, the, exam the example of it, too, specifically calls out an orc grabbing an HVT. Yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. Uh, so he can try and deny you getting his HVT, but it's still not the enemy HVT, so he can't evacuate his own. So you can no, grab yeah, your friendly we, we HVTs, and then like unless they kill the model, they can't get to it. Yep. Interesting. And you don't need to be a specialist to grab the HVTs. So, you can just so case back them. Yeah. Maggie can just grab the two of them and go. You have to kill me, and I'm going to run to the far back corner. I don't think you can case back with Maggie, but let me. Or you City definitely Maggie, can me because they're not a remote and they're not impetuous. <laughs> Oh no, I think maybe you're right. Yeah. The targeted civilian cannot be in silicon with an enemy model and they cannot already have a civivac token. Yep. 
The only requirement is REM. That's what the only we, like unit. Or it can't be in a fire team. That's right. Or be coordinating. Yeah. So what about what about rem, I guess tags that have remote presence? Are not remote. Pilots They're are not remote. It's the it's the type. If your troop type is REM, right. but the pilot is a remote. But yeah. so you can't not the tag. So the pilot couldn't do it, but the the tag can. The tag can just be like, "Come with me if you want to live." Yeah, <laughs> just fuck off with the HBTs. <laughs> Which is funny because you and can you can grab, grab two of them too. But you can't yep. you can't evacuate them at the evacuation point. And even if you got out. But you can you can there. have them hang out with you while you suppress and cover. <laughs> oh yeah, right. yeah, for sure. But it's just it's a funny thing where the the tag grabs them, runs them over to the extraction point. The uh, the pilot gets out and goes, "Oh no, I'm a remote. I can't grab them and, and extract them." Oh no. See, that's why you bring a stigmata, and you're like, "It's fine, fun. I'll help you up." <laughs> it's 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 the fact that you have to go grab seven dudes is it whip plus three i know but it's it's a it's a it's an order to grab it even if it's a short order and then you have to get to an extraction point and then be a specialist and then evacuate them so even if you and that's another whip that is another whip whip that's not (laughs) bonus. and there's no bonus so it's a this one's a big ask. You're right. Just the amount so, of whip checks required. I think if you remove the whip checks, it wouldn't be so bad because it would still be order intensive. Yeah, now it's order intensive with like a 20 to 40 percent failure rate on every time you do it. And also your opponent's shooting you. But you're like, okay, so I have my fast guy. Like I have like a Sujan that's like can move 10 inches and climbing plus or whatever, and just goes whoop, 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 and collects the guys and brings them back. Then he's gonna drop them, which you can just cancel and they just drop to the ground. Then your specialist has to spend two orders picking them up, and then another two orders evacuating them, hopefully not failing those whip rolls. Yep. And so it's like, what? <laughs> so it's like motorcycle specialists are freaking premium. Assuming They're pretty good, yeah. Through a few things. It's a big ask. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's a very specific list you want to build for this mission. Again, cool. you're right. I really yeah. like it. Yeah, that's why I think Owen's decision not to have all three of these in the same the same <laughs> launch event is probably a good idea. You don't yeah. have enough lists. You just lose horribly first round, but then like win the other two. You're like, I bu- I built my list for these two, <laughs> and then you went, yeah, these are my two lists, one for each of these scenarios. Better hope my opponent doesn't have anything that I'm bad against here. <laughs> <laughs> Better like, hope I need a visor because I couldn't find a way to fit one in here. Like the craziest thing to me about this mission is like. So we talk about how challenging it is to do those objectives, but like that's in a void. That's with your opponent not putting a mine next to one of them, and like of course, just, just littering the table, like, crazy, just qualities. being obnoxious and being like, "Ah, oh, yeah, see these seven no mimetism camel markers in my little null zone between the, the, the zero or the uh, what's it called um, exclusion exclusion zone in my deployment? They're definitely not all shotguns and viral rifles." Yeah. Come don't don't think I won't just Moran crazy quals all over this table before the game starts. Yeah, they may not go very far up, but they go just far enough that two of these civilians are going to be real hard for you to get. Cargador is going to love this mission because it's just going to, the Moran's just going to run off with everybody at the beginning of the game. <laughs> and then the Hellcats are going to show up and steal everybody else. But that's like something to be like, you get, I was, I was going to want a five order whatever. group with buys that can clear everybody. Is Specular Killer like Specialist though? No, but you sit right next to the enemy's evac. <laughs> sure, yeah, I guess. Come on, losers. I'm here to <laughs> shotgun whoever comes first. <laughs> I'm going to kill at least one of you. You want to get on the boat? He can't come. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, so there's there's the one that is probably the most order intensive. And then the last one is a new room mission, which I'm super excited for. I love all room missions uh, called Last Launch. Dan, you want to cover this one? Yeah, uh, I hate the fact that if you have one room mission, then there's usually a room on every table for the whole event, no matter what scenario you're playing. And it kind of makes it boring, if that makes any sense. Like, I love room missions, but I hate transitioning from a room mission to a non-room mission in the same tournament because mm. no one adjusts the tables. Mm-hmm. You just I mean, room. the TO can just go adjust all the tables. That's what I would do. Yeah, I have but a bunch they never of, like... do. Well then, just they have to get good. That's all. I'm just, I'm just saying. That's that's my only. 
I love remissions. I hate the fallout of remissions. That's fair. Because of it ruins other missions. Because it just makes them boring with the big thing in the middle. And just like, ugh. Ugh. I've done this go, twice already today. Get anyway, go help. The last launch. Uh, this is a mission where you have to go to the edge of the board or like Oh, hang on. Before we get started though, this is a shout out because this is based on Dante Harrower's scenario from our sister podcast, Loss of Lieutenant, uh, and their custom mission challenge. So shout out to the boys in Australia who ran a custom mission writing challenge for ITS. They got a mission into the mission pack, which is, this is the second time the Australians have gotten a mission in ITS. So just a big oh. congratulation to Dante and all the fellas. Is this why this mission is so bad? Da I'm joking. <laughs> is this why it's so upside down? <laughs> I mean, it's easily my favorite mission in the book. I know. It's, it's mine it's, too. It's, it's, it's mine it's too. It's a fantastic mission. This is a really cool but mission. All right, go on down. have a room with 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 a with a, 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 basically an elevator to space or something, some teleporter, I don't know, an evacuation uh token in the middle. It's like what 50 mil, 40 mil, 40 mil. It's a big slingshot. Um, and then like on the middle line on each side, uh eight inches from the edges, you have like little ID tag giver consoles. And so you have to go with a specialist. Uh you get a was it a hacker bonus? Or is there a bonus? Yeah, it's a hacker bonus. <laughs> Bonuses. So you have to get the papers. So, so you have no to go ticket. get the ID. And then you can move the ID to other troopers. And then a trooper with the ID has to go in to the middle of the room and then get extracted. And so the only role is to get the ID, I think. There's also no hacker bonus. No. It's just a whip check. So yes. the, the hardest thing is getting the yeah normal whip roll, and then you get an ID token. Uh, Evo hackers get an extra order. Oh no, they just get extracted no, without Evo having. Uh, an, don't they need don't ID. need to have an ID token. That's what it is. Yeah. Notably, they don't get one. They don't so start with one. You can't just pass it off. Need one. Yeah. Yeah, but they don't need so, it. And baggage count. They have a uh, multi pass. So how, you, how you score points is if you extracted if you've ran away with more army points than the adversary you get four whopping four points which is like a huge swingy thing if it's this and then you get specialist troops if you extract with specialist troops if more specialist troops have left you get two points and then if you've killed more specialist troops then you get two points and then there's also if you kill the same number of specialists um, but someone has to stay behind too because there's 1.4 dominating the launch tower. You have to dominate the launch tower, which is the launching tower is the whole room. It's not the thing in the middle. Um, so you just have to dominate the room. So I it, love how it's not complex because it's all based in one location. It's all very centralized, but I love the, the moving scoring pieces here because you're having to balance getting stuff off the board of like a significant value which means you're fighting pieces with killing your opponent killing the right pieces to keep your opponent from being able to even id check and then preserving those same pieces and getting them off the board at the same time and you can't coordinate order jump out nope is this the uh is this the comment on the the the, the star wars review of the first scene of A New Hope is such a great scene, shot so well and so intelligent that I don't believe that he made it or whatever George Lucas made it. <laughs> Somebody else <laughs> shot it. It's, it's too clever. George Lucas too well done. Made this. He, made, he couldn't possibly done. have done this. Yeah. <laughs> it's got the it's actually Spielberg, imposing Spiel, over Spielberg top. covered from that day. Spielberg yeah. was like, yeah, I got this. Don't worry. George, Here's what you do, fine. man. You, you you film from low, right? You have the little shit moving away and then the big shit <laughs> just, comes in from above. Spielberg's just like hanging out with him that day. That's right. George That's Lucas what the Lost Lieutenant like, guys did. Oh, they, yeah, they, yeah. They, they, they pinch hit. They pinch hit this one for uh, for CB. Yeah, that's great. So basically, to summarize, it's like pottery, uh, right? With an exclusion zone in the middle of the board, so you only get four inch advanced deployment. Uh, you have to get to the middle of the board, halfway mark, eight inches from the side, with a specialist, extract an ID token, then an allied trooper has to spend a short skill with no roll and next to the person with an ID token 
and grab it. And then you have to spend a short skill in the middle of the room in the token there, and then you get extracted. And so you make your army weaker and potentially score points. It's a big push pull. I like that like balancing act. I think that's the the there's a real subtle but like I think um like important amount of like uh decision making it's gonna go into that during the game that I think is gonna be really fun to play. Well, just building your list is like it's so intensive of like, well, I want to bring specialists because I want to get them out and I want to be able to get ID cards, but I don't want to bring too many specialists because if he kills enough, then that's free points for him or the other whatever. You're my opponent. And so then you're like, well, what the heck's going on? So like, wow. And you're like, wait, do I bring a tag? And then like, who stays behind? So you can jump into the room. You can get in the room with any model in the game because it's a wide passage. Yeah. It's also a big door. Into yeah. The room. Yeah. Everybody can walk in and they start open. And they start open. We're like, wait, do I want a really good arrow piece looking in the middle? Also, if you are alive, but in a null state, you can still get extracted in that you can walk up, get shot by arrows, and as long as you're not removed from the board, you'll your 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 fledgling little corpse <laughs> will be extracted. It's like when the professor's skiing, but he's unconscious. He's sleeping the whole time. If you you're try. laying <laughs> bleeding in the elevator as it carries just, you. Up they just the fire his corpse into the sun. <laughs> Barnes are just flying. So around. like, so if you have like remote presence, you have to take like what three hits that and you fail all the armor saves. So it's like somewhat of a more secure thing. So some you can just like walk in and be like, "Go ahead and shoot me. I'm Extract I'm out." Extract the carcass because you don't have to roll once you have the ID card, or if you're an Evo hacker, you just walk up and touch it. Short skill. You yeah. could get Ooh. case backed onto it too, which is interesting because remember you can pick up your unconscious guys and move them around. But then they, uh, they can't spend They money. need the ID. Couldn't you put the ID on them with swap ID? No, the ID has to be grabbed. The guy, the guy the takes it. Oh, but I mean, but if they went unconscious while they had an ID, could you not case fact them onto the thing? But then that, that model uh, has to You only remove the trooper and any peripherals, and I don't believe case vac counts as a peripheral. So you can move them onto there, and then you can shoot them with a med kit. And then they can just get out. What if the person but, case vacking leaves while case vacking somebody? Wouldn't they all go? I don't know. That is a good question. Uh, I mean, I'm gonna go with no on the grounds that I you think only they just remove, remove the trooper and the case of that person drops and his peripherals. Mm, got it. Okay. And so they would just end up wherever he had been. It's kind of like if he removed. got shot by a fearbox and exploded. He just is no longer there. In the case of that person, goes oh. Unless they yeah. change the case fact rule to replace that. So I'm just going to check right now. Mm -hmm. Do you yeah, go I first think... on this mission? I think so. And what do you do with that first turn? Do you leave or do you just collect IDs? So, so this is the mission that I was that you can't really null deploy on because then it gives your opponents way too much leverage to get ahead of points. I feel like null deploying in this mission would be a really bad idea. Because if they brought like two Evo hacker bots, they just like coordinate a few times and then just walk out the middle. And then it's like with baggage, that's potential. 70. Like, tons of I think you work. throw as many Evo baggages out as you can. <laughs> yeah, we so, were looking at it. You're like, we already looked at that. Back can have three. The, the best Evo team is, of course, Steel Phalanx. Um, they have the most value in this particular mission right off the break. So you uh, get two evil baggage bots, and then they and get Celia. Uh, Celia, who's an evil hacker that's worth like what thirty five points. Yeah. So between just those three models is a hundred points in the sky and a specialist, and then they just fight with the remaining two hundred. And, and they're not actually a hundred points though, because you're getting the baggage bonus, right? That's yeah, that's, that's what the, the extra forty points from the baggage is. It's only it's only two hundred and forty. You'll have two hundred forty points left on the table with a hundred points in the air. Right. And one of them is a specialist. Actually, sorry, all three of them are specialists. Because the evil hackers are still hackers, and she yep. is also a hacker. So you've gotten three off at that point. So and then you just defend the room. And then you just you can take her with peripherals too if you want to get more points in the air. You have to take her with the peripheral one. That's the thirty-five with the peripheral because you need to take her as specifically the. Uh, oh, because the evil comes the peripheral, doesn't it? That's right. Yeah. Right. 
yeah, you can't actually take her in any other of the forms, um, like the FTO one where he's his own his own man. You can't do that because she's not an Evo. There's only one profile. It's 35. She's an Evo hacker with the upgrade Trinity, and you just leave. Mm. <laughs> Uh, think- just you know, uh, case vac is canceled if you declare any order or skill that's not cautious movement, climb, dodge, jump, reset, or short movement. So I knew it. It just gets dropped. Yeah, it just gets dropped. Left right. behind. The ID tower is like, oh, that person's not coming. Wait, <laughs> that guy Sorry. doesn't have a pulse. Did you say case vac is canceled? So like, if you do an attack, it's canceled. Yes, because it's not. It, it has a short movement skill, but if it doesn't, so, then no. So you drop the guy. So to shoot. in yeah. evacuation, even if you fight back while carrying the civilians away. You would correct and have to yep. pick them back up again. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> case fact state is automatically canceled if the trooper declares a case fact a skill other than Who's cautious move, climb, dodge, dodge, jump, reset, or short movement. So you can't even fight your way through. Yeah. You have to have a clear line before or suicide. Yeah. And hopefully or just you roll. Dodge them with you. Like carry them on your back as you dodge. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, two probot Evo hackers plus cilia. It's 1.5 SWIC. 65 goes to 105 points. Um every other faction is less than that and so i mean it's regular alif you could bring vanilla but this right. map this mission is so like if if i had to pick a faction that i would play and i i was like i'm gonna try and win last launch steel phalanx is my guy this is a steel phalanx mission through and through and they've opinion. got a good mix of um like you're gonna you're you gonna take the, eat... you take the midpoint value fighters that can hold the room you take like your your hippolytas and your um eudoruses and these tough guys that are also specialists and can also like just eclipse themselves while they're in the room and disappear say, it just eclipse the middle button and then everyone just leaves <laughs> there's nothing they're going to be able to do about Bye. it and then you could have like eudoros hippolyta and Machaon and a myrmidon sitting in the room as the last four and you you like, don't okay, even need to leave. Good luck. You're like, are you just give up to dominate the one you kill? If you want to like, you want to be on a way ten. Don't yeah. let them come in. Don't let them let them get anybody in. You have four <laughs> of the best fighters in the faction in a single link team for cheaper than like anything that's going to come in and tackle that. And they can't yeah, get the okay. points back for having more army points and special extractive. They can't get through that wall, right? Right. So you're, yeah. you're, if you're if up six extract. then. But that's the disable there, man. You still gotta run over to the, the beacon, and you gotta run back, and then you gotta. Get... You don't. All you need to no, do because that hundred points didn't need three, to ever get ID checked. Just the three guys and everyone. Yeah, else. those three guys, and then you just kill everyone else who tries to. And come that's, like, that's right, because they have to try and get. Like, if you just watch the two, like if you're just in that room watching the two ID scanners, and watching yep. the front door, like good luck. I mean, it depends on terrain, right? Sure. So much depends on terrain. I mean, I mean, the room is terrain. I think the room will always saying, be right? a room. Like, you can throw 100 points through that door at the very beginning into the air and then have 240 points surrounding the room and the ID checkers being like, I just have Let to stand here longer than you. You put a suppressing Yodam in a doorway. He's hard to get past. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you don't get that in steel flanks, but I do appreciate what you're yeah. saying, yes. Yeah, I uh, I think the, they, have a, they have a lot on the... They have Atalanta who could just look at the button right at the get-go down yeah. the hallway. You've got link teams who are riddled with specialists who can hand out ID tokens. Decent enough whip across your faction. Like you're not playing in a whip 12 faction. Cheap, cheap net rods. And then you have the most Evo. And so you can just get a bunch of points out at any time. Well, how, how to win these missions, we'll, we'll save for season two. For the yeah, break. it's like it's 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 a whole again a whole different way of list building i feel definitely yeah you can't just build to your standard i really like o12 in a lot of these missions because they they're so specialist demanding mm-hmm. and o12 just has so many just built-in specialists that are really good again just i'm gonna play here yeah, no. everywhere they don't even they get one evo hacker and he doesn't have baggage and he's a full swing <laughs> he's just a dude <laughs> yeah well good luck toha good luck with that <laughs> at the same yeah. time toha can like hey you want Toha is another one that's in there. You yeah. want to get killed outside the anybody so, can get murdered outside the, the room? <laughs> all right, all right, Let's we'll save this for the end. Let's talk about our, our next season at the end of this. So the only other thing to note is they moved Annihilation out of the main missions into direct action. And I think that makes sense because Annihilation wasn't getting used very much in events anymore. Um, and it is kind of just a direct action mission. So they simplified Annihilation, no classifieds, kill, survive, 
kill specialists, and that's it. And you get a defensive turret. I don't think we need to talk about that because I think it's pretty. <laughs> I think it's pretty. All direct action missions are straightforward. It is the and, and and kill your opponent while not dying is the most straightforward objective I can think of. Um. Yep. So then that's our third part we're coming to here, which is resilience operations. We finally know what the tactical and battle conditions are for, and it's basically what is colloquially and commonly known now as an open war deck. Um, it means it's for making procedurally generated missions. They don't add anything to the ITS missions, as, although I speculated as to that. Um, these are a fully separate game style for running tournaments and events in ITS where you and your opponent generate the mission every turn. There's a homogenized um, table setup where there's always three objectives, four beacons, and HVTs. Uh, and everyone gets issued a beeper which is an interesting thing and then everyone so sorry sometimes cards as battlefield conditions will give you a defensive turret um and then other than that you each of you draws four and chooses uh three for tactical objectives and each one of those can score up to nine so you can score three points from each one over the course of the game uh a tenth one from a classified i believe and then you've also got one battlefield condition each and if they're tied, then like if you if you both draw the same one because you're both using separate decks, then you draw a new one until you have two different ones. So we have procedurally and, and we don't have the decks. So we can't go too deep into these. We'll do a whole episode when the deck comes out. But what do you guys think about that? That procedurally generated mission structure? Just going to wait until I see the deck. Yeah, it's it's like, kind of hard. Cool, so but this is this is what I feel like is that either we'll start seeing some like weird fun tournaments where it's almost like a blood bowl feel where it's like, you can be blood bowl ranked playing like wildly different rules for blood bowl of like, you get this many points or you get twice that many points to build your list, or you get these weird star players that were invented by Joe Schmo yesterday that you get to be in your list and everyone gets random star players. And it's like all these crazy things in blood bowl, but they're all like ranked the basically the ITS format of like you can play and you can get points in in national and world rankings and when you look at like resilience operations it's like it's different but then at the beginning there's also all the optional play options uh including reinforcements that you can throw in the missions but there's also like you could remove the model cap you can remove all these other things and so it's like I kind of want to see that kind of stuff of like throw it around some more like have some random stuff and just that's kind of just uh, that was it. what i was thinking dan is that i feel like the chaos would be good for the meta like having you not be able to plan for your missions as much and have to respond to what comes up it's almost like playing highly classified over and over and over again right like you don't know what you're necessarily going to get as the mix you have a general idea because you know what's in the deck we don't know how deep those decks are like count wise yet but i think that that chaos might be healthy for for people playing the game from keeping it to get stale do you yeah. all play the same combo each round you don't that's why it would be like playing high classified right you're gonna get a different draw for every every oh, table everyone just so the tournament's gonna like, have different it's it, that was like, like a malifo this... thing dan, dan can dan can attest to this when we played malifo tournaments there would be basically a group draw for your scheme pool and then the strategy would be universal for everybody for this one it would be all be table by table I, huh. I hear about this this year warhammer 40k who apparently has killed itself in the last week um now everybody's really happy i'm the only person that's not happy owen their uh <laughs> according to the internet. their system came out with a, 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 a it's the same thing it's a condition and win state but they do it by round where like the to draws what they're going to be and then every table just goes and partakes in they the just same the setting yeah they announce the mix yeah, so the mix for this round is, and then that way everyone's got the same rounds, like the same problems to deal with each round. Um, maybe you do it random every time. I don't know. I I would like to. I would like this if you did it with the tactical objectives and stuff like that, and you did it for everyone playing the same ones on all the tables. You could still do it random each turn, each round, um, but you just make everyone play the same one. I feel like that would be good. For like, like figuring out what's going on. Otherwise, the TO is like, wait, what's going on? And when, which, which missions are you guys playing? Like, <laughs> I think a nice one would just be 
you you have the TO draw for the, the, the event each round. Maybe they do it in advance, maybe they don't. And then they just go, all right, everybody, this mission is uh, the floor is lava and you have to capture these or kill these or whatever the cards are going to look like. But again, unless the cards are really flat and then it isn't big skews between each set of yeah, like, potentials. 10 QAZ zones. Yeah, because like, what if some of the cards involve putting a bunch of tokens down and stuff like that or terrain needs to move? Um, but I, again, I don't have a card. So there's a card. I don't have much to say. That's fair. Yeah, I mean, so going back to like the extras, which is like the where the reinforcements option is there. I think reinforcement still kind of breaks a lot of the scenarios, but then like you have the direct actions, you have resilience operations, you have mercenary contractors, you have the CQB reinforced command, free game, spec ops, soldiers of fortune, escalation. Like all these things are there and they've kind of been there. But now there's like more there, and it would it would be neat to see more tournaments that utilize some of that stuff. Like I'd love to play a reinforcements tournament. It kind of sucks because everything's kind of proxy right now. So maybe like give it another like five six months. That's so like you only get the models. Maybe not that long, but you know, at least everyone has an opportunity to get the models. But like free game, the extra removes a limit of fifteen troopers in army list. So a player can use army list with more than fifteen troopers in them. You just remove that rule from the game and go have at her. You know, and it's like, does it break the game? Is it fun for everybody? Was it horrible? Okay, we won't play that again. You know, but like, or maybe it's not. Maybe it was really fun. And same thing with like the soldiers of fortune. You can build up like an 85 point mercenary troop or the escalation where you're playing smaller games, which is a completely different animal than playing your standard size games. You have to like make sacrifices and figure out what you're doing. Like, it's just so many cool things can be. And these are all ITS supported where you can get rankings with all these extra rules. So it seems like crazy fun tournaments, but they're actually like legit tournaments. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I, I love the idea of that. But I, will I, people show up to these tournaments? Will people well, that's it, them? right? I, I think what it takes is it takes leadership like in any of these things to try different things and not just fall into the same things all the time. I think what's cool about it is that they've done something they haven't done before now that it's new because obviously we, all three of us are talking about how we've seen these sort of like formats and other systems and di different variations and how that gets handled and how it evolves but to see them break their format a little bit where it's been very consistent for 15 14 seasons right and they're doing something like fairly new and they've included three brand new missions and a bunch of new format stuff and like hostile terrain and hostile monsters on the table like melee monsters and stuff that's new that's different that's gonna make me excited to try the fact that like if there's 20 missions a fifth of them always have something weird we haven't necessarily played with before and then there's this whole new format where it could just be I, i'm sure those quaz creatures are in the cards you know what i mean like they're the, all that stuff that's in there is probably going to be duplicated as a card somewhere because the turret's in there we'll see how it goes going forward i'd be very excited to see like you said, Dan, like a format where people actually get into these more challenging sort of like mission modes where you don't know what you're going into. Because I think people get very comfortable with thinking Infinity has been solved because they've made good lists for popular missions. And they know exactly how to play them. But that little bit of chaos and uncertainty combined with like not knowing what your opponent's playing for. I like the idea that they're both blind, right? Until you start scoring, like you don't know what your opponent's mission cards are going to be. But then also That's give cool. an opportunity for like lesser played models to shine in certain scenarios or certain yes. options, yeah. right? Yeah, broader value for for the whole like kit and caboodle of models. No, I think dude. variation of what you play for is an underrated balancing technique that game devs can use, right? Instead of just changing <laughs> if like to a hammer, everything looks like a nail, right? If killing is the only thing that matters, then your things that kill will be worth the most points but if you have missions like in in like we just saw with um what is it launch what was it called launch bay launch last launch or last launch yeah last launch um where you you're not trying to kill like there is some killing stuff for specialists but for the most part just getting guys off the table and then holding a zone that's a big like that's a big change in value all of a sudden and things that might not be valuable like owen just made a list where the most valuable thing is a bunch of evil <laughs> when's that ever been the case 
it's i think it's a very underrated way well, of well, creating the, the double sun dunk buns were still the most expensive thing yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly we got to prevent but, them from getting id somehow <laughs> but but that's but that that idea of like game dev uh uh, attrition against like things becoming too powerful by just switching up how what like what the stakes are as opposed to switching up how things operate on the game table in like a direct way is i think a very smart way of approaching it and i'm excited to see that happening in the in the packet so overall man i feel good about its 15 i think it's it's got a good blend of familiarity with like new stuff and kind of head scratcher stuff um and makes me want to start a new army like it always does so that's probably where i share this off with I do have one thing I want to bring, mention and oh, sure, we'll go, go for into it. it in more detail after, but we sat and did a whole bunch of videos on reinforcements and all the profiles and the rules and blah, blah, blah. And we sat here and said, well, we'll just have to see. We'll just have to see how they change. Um, we haven't gone through and done a full, like every scenario, though most of them are the same. Mm -hmm. Has your feeling changed at all about the initial, like, how is how is reinforcements going to play out like have you played reinforcements yet i have not played reinforcements yet but my second thing is uh it's an optional and thus we'll it is an option in here okay Let's i was just looking for that one right I was gonna say, is it even in here it is yeah it's under one of the optionals in the same right. as like get right, rid of the right, unit right. limit so I, unfortunately for me like i have an event coming up and oh and so are the mercenary contractors you can yeah, take you can optionally add them back in yeah, I was going through all like the all the things. It's like you can and like you can bring one of them. You can get a motorized bounty hunter bashy bazook or, or sec that. Right. I kind of like that they're in there as an extra then and that you can mix and match. Because you could add some and not others, but I was just gonna say that I, I have an event coming up that I've set up here and I I thought about reinforcements, but the fact that currently for like six out of eight of the factions, you're gonna need to just proxy the hell out of it. I'd rather wait until the models are at least available and then we'll open sure. up that optional. Yeah, yeah. Whether or not I think that it's actually going to function when most of the missions are still end of game, you're going to win because you have 100 extra Well, you points. just don't play those missions, right? You just sure. pick missions that it would support reinforcements better. I think I think last launch would be fun with reinforcements. Um, last launch would be weird. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which I think is cool because <laughs> you can have a scramble at the end. Yeah, yeah. So you have to, you, you just have to filter a bit. Um, but again, waiting now until the models are available. My, my feeling hasn't changed. Yeah. And I think you're right. I think it's more to do with this will be, I think reinforcements will become more popular at the end of the season when more models are out for reinforcements, right? Like I'm going to quickly paint up uh, my, and I was going to say this at the end, but I'm going to quickly paint up my reinforcement mercenaries to go with my JSA so that I have it all, like, and I can play it. And I have enough models that are old to do, and I have an, a, a, a Cascuda so I can do it for my Morats as well. And then I've got the availability to try it when it comes out, but I don't think we'll be playing a ton of it early on because I can't expect my opponents to have those miniatures without doing a ton of proxying. Yeah, and that uh, I get it. Proxies are fine, blah 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 blah. But no. <laughs> yeah, I, I think we'll start. I think what will probably end up happening is we'll dig into reinforcements halfway through when the first couple of reinforcement packs are out, and we're excited about it. I think that's probably that's the biggest flaw of the reinforcements is it's like it's an optional thing that will cost you hundreds of dollars to collect <laughs> that you may or may not collect. And if you do and you want everyone else to, but they don't, then you're screwed. But it has to start somewhere, Dan. And if those of course, packs of come out, but if I mean, you want to play with those if, miniatures, then they'll try the it. And they want to with existing want. miniatures, then it might be played more. You know what I mean? Right. Or, but what, I, what I'm saying is what I would bet happens, Dan, is that these reinforcements become mainline units in 16. And there's a new wave of reinforcements for for 16. Does that make sense? Like it rolls and it yeah. had to start somewhere. Well, uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah. But that's but I'm just saying the first years are gonna be more rough because sure. That. Like we're like, hey, we got these new rules, we can play reinforcements. Let's wait six months until all the models are out. Exactly. We're just through the it, and that's why I'm saying it had to start somehow, and it was always gonna start this way. Look, I just want another ALF faction called Real Steel, and it's just day one tack bots boxing people and, that's, <laughs> and it's just wolverine and a it's kid it's standing wolverine inside the table. and a child standing behind the day one tag real steel the, just robot joxing their way to victory to all wars are fought with robot jocks now yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I want the game to be robot jocks i want everything to be robot oh, jocks. i'm not even going to be there 
Um, you have to throw a spin. You have to do one of these optional extras. <laughs> no, it's the first one of 15, and I picked two crazy scenarios. Yeah, I think Owen well, already put enough pressure on him. Everyone will remember how fine. to play the game. And also, <laughs> many people haven't played a game since, like, Eamon's last event, so... <laughs> so cut them some slack. Let's, let's, let's baby let's get, steps this. Let's get everybody to go to play game. And, yeah. and not hate it. All the rules um, are different. Every single one. All right, so I'm going to kick game. off with what my options are so i'm going to finish my jsa is my first step and finish off the brawlers uh so that i have the mercenary team for reinforcements if and when i play them i'm going to finish painting the cascuda and the extra stuff so that i can play my morats the same way and then i'm going to start a new faction uh everyone wants me to play hawk Islam because i've never played them before i think that's so what i'm going to do <laughs> And then my question would be, which Hawk Islam faction should I start with? Owen oh, thinks I should start with Baram, but I'll do a poll. I'll do a poll on the uh, the the Discord and see what people think uh, when this goes live as to what which of the Hawk Islam factions I should start with. What about you, Dan? You're going to Yu Ching, yeah? You're going to order that uh, that core yeah, model stuff gonna, and start with Yu Ching. I'm kind of going to probably going to flesh out my Druze uh the tiny i have most of it but i'm just gonna flesh it out a little bit more and then uh and yeah just get painting my yujing it's interesting because like since the like i haven't played a ton and i feel like i still can explore crazy lists with starmata for a long time even even o12 but like i miss i haven't played o12 in a long time like vanilla mm. and i like i miss that kind of feel i miss like playing with links and like gangbusters and stuff so i might just be hopping around constantly um but maybe maybe I just commit to Yujing for a little while and uh You'll get bored fast. You'll get bored after like five games, zero twelve and start something new. As soon as those miniatures come in, you'll be excited about Yujing because it'll be new and oh, different. For sure, for sure. But I, just, I don't on? know I don't know which faction I'm gonna play first, whether it's gonna be Well that's what we'll do a poll. We'll do a poll for what people think we should do and then we'll ignore it or listen to it or whatever. Tell me what you want. This is not a democracy. We'll just see what people want and then either give it to them or not give it to them. <laughs> Her. I'm gonna play the Ariadnas. I was gonna I'm say USA again, but they're boring. Um, but they're mostly just like, what do you do with US Ariadna these days? Bikes, <laughs> all bikes, so many. Yeah, bikes. I did that before though. Like, I but did. it's good now. That's the thing. It was good it's before. Good. It... It's better now. I like blackjacks. I want to make blackjacks work. <laughs> I also want you to make blackjacks and bikes work. I think it'd be amazing. Yeah, and I also want to play. Um, I going to expand my Tartary again, and I have a Merovingian army, so yeah, maybe good, good. Moblots it's, it's, are models that exist in the game. So now I get to play the Poors. God, they're terrible. <laughs> <laughs> All the Poors. All the yeah. Poors from Planet Poor. Yep, that's what it'll be. I mean, I, I love that runs are four two movement. This is my favorite thing. It's gonna be the forgot. year. It's gonna be the year of the 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 cocky cargo pants for for all of tactical awareness. Everyone's painting dudes in cargo pants. Comlink grunt is only twenty points. Only he's twenty points. The comlink doesn't do anything. Still, he's I'm so mad about Sorry, that. Sorry, he's comlink plus two, so he what? gets two additional guys in his arm. Why does? Who cares? Yes. It's just attacks. The comlink thing doesn't make any sense to me. Still, I no. was hoping there would be something in this document with the comlinks. I don't know why there isn't. Yes. There's nothing for comlinks. There's no special missions. There's no special mission rules. I was really hoping that point value meant something. It doesn't mean shit. They're just attacks. Yes. It's the if you want to bring well, you bring extra when you now I can bring 17 models in my army. I, I guess you can play reinforcements without reinforcements, right? You don't have to take the comlink guy. You do. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, the other you side. You cannot, you cannot play reinforcements without having a common guy. You no, have no, to. Have but a you can I play... bring him when it's not reinforcements? No, no. What I mean is, you can play with the reinforcement rules, but you don't have to bring reinforcements. You absolutely you do. Normal list. You have to. You have to. You bring have them. to. Wait, you really? Have to. As yes. part of the reinforcement. <laughs> you have oh, no yes, choice. All players must use must use the reinforcement rules. Yeah. Jesus, never mind. He just attacks. He makes no sense. Okay, <laughs> There's okay. no point in the common costing I, anything. Can I bring him though if I'm not playing reinforcements to get 17 guys in my list? You cannot. The reinforcement profiles don't appear unless you toggle that option on. He does. Yeah, you can bring the common guy, but he doesn't do anything. But does he give me the plus two guys? He does no. not. Ah. 
Well, I don't know. Build a list. See if it gives you a red X. It won't. It won't. <laughs> <laughs> if it gives you the green, if it gives you the green check mark, you're good to go. He's trying it right now. Of course yeah. he is. <laughs> well, so next week uh, we are going to be kicking off season two. I can't believe we did a whole season of the show. And the reason it's gonna be season two is it's ITS 15. It the document is here. Uh we're gonna lean in it. with some um like breakdowns of a mission. We'll probably just do an order uh and list writing for those missions based on what we're excited about for this season. So we'll do that poll, talk about maybe what you could what you'd want to see us start with as far as factions, and maybe we'll we'll use those for the um the uh whatchamacallit, the um the the breakdown for the mission. See so use them as just like our test bucket, not that we're necessarily gonna do that right away, but have that be our lens we look through those missions with. Um, and yeah, we'll go one by one for the next few episodes and break down the new season and those missions and, and talk about the various ins and outs. We'll also do the mailbags. So make sure you get more questions in there. And if you are in Calgary, uh, you should go check out Owen's tournament, uh, the ITS 15 season opener, the Tactic Bonus 15 season opener. And where's it going to be? Sentry Box? Yeah. At the Sentry Box. Box. On the 30th. Dan's not invited. Dan, he was never allowed to come. He had to I go find someone else to come. Yeah, he, he didn't want to go. Well, you weren't invited anyway. Never. Never. I can't to... see who's going to my own event. <laughs> that sucks so hard, Facebook. Um, oh, also, I put a comm link in a normal list, and it gave me an X saying, you added the comm link, remember that yeah, this I said that it you can't do it, with reinforcement. Jesus, keep up, Dan. Come on. <laughs> Wait, did you say that? Yes. He did, yeah. Oh. <laughs> he mumbles. Um, so yeah, we'll link the we'll link Owen's event in the video description or the sorry the the pod, uh, podcast description so you guys can go check it out. Uh, so go sign up if you're in Calgary and go play. Go kick off the season opener. Owen will shower you with the greatest of events at the Sunday Box. We got lots and, of prizes. Mm, oh, yeah, lots of prizes, sweet. And then and he'll win with a double tag, and you can complain about it. He's not gonna. No, play I'm gonna play just... U.S. Area. Yeah. <laughs> I don't Are understand why you guys tag? keep saying that. They yeah. don't have tags. <laughs> There's there are no taxis, yeah. There's no taxis. You can't, you you can't do it. There's no. There isn't even like a Chernobyl. There's nothing. Yeah, they get nothing. <laughs> they, get, they get shit. They get zero. They might get an anaconda, don't they? I think they get no, anaconda. They get nothing. They get There's nothing. No tag. They get nobody. They really? Tag. There's nothing. nothing. Are they the one faction that can't take a tag? Maybe so. at all. I think they, they get something. They, they, they get a merc tag. A mercenary. Yeah, no. mercenary. A mercenary tag. They get nothing. Eh? Nothing. They get nothing. They get a tractor they're mule, just, blackjack. They're just man. happy that they got to be still in the game. We got Why? invited. <laughs> All I'm saying is they should have gotten into it. the out of catalog. <laughs> All right. Uh, it also is does get after midnight. So I'm going to bed. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.